the I fucked up. If you want to write it, write it five times. And, and I did. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I took that lousy play at Quran Vada. What a son of a bitch I was. <laughs> How stupid can I be? And you fucking ask me about that, man? I mean, just say you're stupid. Man. Okay, we, we both go out and have a beer, okay? On today's part of my take, Grit Week 2021 is finally here. We're hitting the road. We have an incredible interview with Jim Calhoun to start the week off. We actually went up to Connecticut to interview him on Thursday. We're going to be on the road. We're going to be traveling around old school style in the grittiest parts of the country. Uh, kind of a throwback to our first grit week, second grit week as well. We also have uh, preseason football, who's back of the week, a Monday reading from Billy, and the Mount Rushmore of road trip songs. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Road trip songs. Uh, and we're doing it all sponsored by Coors Light. Coors Light sponsoring all of Grit Week. Coors Light is the best beer that has ever been created. That's a fact. What you also don't know is Coors Light is the official beer of slowing down summer. Summer always feels like the shortest season. Only a few weeks left, but we need to make the most of it. We all just need to chill as the beer that's made to chill. We want to savor every second of summer, rediscover and enjoy what makes summer awesome. You crack open that Coors Light. You soak in the moment. You feel you feel alive in the moment during summer. Coors Light also is literally made to chill. It's cold lagered, cold filtered, cold packaged. It is literally made to chill. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies. Perfect for a moment to unwind this summer. A little Colorado Kool-Aid. So crack open a Coors Light. Enjoy those last few days of summer. We know football is coming up, but soak in the summer. Coors Light is the best beer ever. It's the official beer of slowing down summer because it's the beer that's made it chill. We want you to savor every second of summer. Get Coors Light in the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. If you want to support us, if you want to support Grit Week, crack open an ice cold Coors Light because they are supporting Grit Week and they're sponsoring all of Grit Week. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by Coors Light. It's the official beer of summer. It's also the official beer of Grit Week 2021. Today is Monday, August 16th, and welcome to Grit Week. Did we do the special Grit Week music? Yeah, we yes. did. Yes, the special Electric Avenue. Yeah. Who is that? Is that Power Man 5000? A little PM 5K? Uh, who knows? Who cares? It's uh, fucking Grit Week. And guess what? Football is back. Football is all the way back. It's sponsored by Coors Light. I don't know if you've seen these new cans. I have. They're incredible. We finally made it in life where our faces are on, on, a on can. beer cans. On a can. My face has been inside beer for a long time. It's now it's beautiful. finally on it. It's beautiful. And it's grit week. And it's, it's your real face, PFT. And it's it real is my face, real face. PFT. How about that? Getting out of the Avi life. You look good. You look skinny. I do, yeah. They, yeah. Well, they had the same photographer take this picture as the one that came out disc golf. I look skinny, us. too. I don't know why. But they really, yeah, they really gave us jawlines. Grit week is here. We're in the studio right now. We're literally hopping on the bus as the minute we finish taping the show. We have Jim Calhoun, which some people are saying is a top 10 interview. That's pretty much just me and Liam, but I think you would agree, too. He was awesome. Incredible. I, I Incredible I, I interview. I could have talked to him for three hours. It, 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 there's rare that we have those interviews where it's like I don't want to leave I just want to hang out with you he was definitely one of those guys so we have uh, that we're going to be on the road we're going to be out we're going to DC we're going to Pittsburgh we're going to Cleveland we're going to Buffalo we'll see you see if, if you see the van if you see the RV on the way give us a honk uh, we're it's a silver bullet so it uh -huh. is literally a silver bullet it's wrapped in Coors Light we look awesome on it but yes preseason football is here um are we overreacting? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But I think well, it, you only have to react in the preseason. Everything's overreaction. I do have my list of uh, rookie rankings. Well, if Justin Fields isn't number one, then I don't know what you're doing. Okay, well, no, he's he's 1A. He's tied for 1A. Okay. Number one is the guy that thought that he actually became Aaron Donald while wearing an Aaron yes. Donald jersey. Yes, he with, was, the, he, with the woman who threw a full drink at, at him yeah. uh, with his back turned, and then he, he decided to take on the entire row in front of him. That guy had the off-white Aaron Donald jersey. Probably the only person that owns that ugly ass. That's the one that has like the 17 different fonts on it. Yes. So he showed up wearing the Aaron Donald jersey, and he became Aaron Donald. He was like... 
oh, you, you're going to triple team me? That's fine. I'll take you guys all on. The lady, the ultimate agent of chaos, who just lobs a Diet Coke over the top, hits the guy, and then he just goes fucking berserk. Crazy. That guy, and yeah, he kind of did get his ass kicked. He did. But in a hilarious they're, way. They are punching his butt. It was body was literally. Shots. They were literally kicking his ass. It, some men pay good money to go to Thailand and have that same procedure done on them. Yes. They, they, um, so the Chargers played the, the Rams. I, these jerseys make no sense. I saw a picture afterwards of like Northwestern players. Someone, t I think it was actually Coach Fitz, tweeted out like Northwestern NFL players, and I couldn't figure out who was on the Chargers and who was on the Rams because they're yeah. wearing the same jersey. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, as far as the actual rookie rankings go, I think it's a tie between Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, and uh, Kellen Mond. Well, if we're going just based on uh, yardage and having to throw a touchdown pass. Then Justin Fields is number one. And, and I'm not going to overreact. And Big Cat, he did run for a touchdown he as did, well. So I'm not going to overreact. I'm going to just, I'm going to be cool with it. Nice dab sneeze there, Billy. Uh, but it was fun. It made me feel alive. I have one problem with the preseason, though. I think that the preseason should should mimic the regular season and that we should have a full Sunday of football with a red zone to get us ready. Because, like, the random start times and, like, oh, it's Sunday, it's Sunday that's normal. Sunday at, uh, 1 is a game. But there was a Thursday night game. There was a Friday night game. There was a game on Saturday at 1. There was a game at 4. Give me, let me actually practice what it feels like to get up on a Sunday and get my body ready and watch every team play. It's preseason for us fans as well. It's a, do, I, but it just I, like comes I do need at to all get times. in the rhythm. I need to get in yeah. the rhythm. Uh, they need to have all the games on, at least in like an easy way for me to watch. I'm sick of having to look up every single time, like, how do I watch this game? What illegal site can I stream this game off? Right. Of? It's uh, it's tough. It's tough for us on fans. But you know what? This is why we, this is our version of two a days mm -hmm. in the off season. This is how we get ready during training camp. Um, Tim Tebow got a target. That was it. Well, that wasn't it. He also had a devastating crackback. Yeah, he, yeah. Tim Tebow, you know what? For all the people who had a great time making fun of Tim Tebow because, yeah, maybe he missed his block and maybe he hit his own teammate harder than he blocked the real guy, but he did his job. Mm -hmm. he, he set the edge. That's a plus play, as Danny Woodhead said. Yep. So, um, I don't know. I, I'd like to see Trevor Lawrence maybe... Maybe target Tim a couple times. He did once. Yeah, but then so that counts. Tavon Austin caught stole the pass. it. Yes, yeah. yes, stole it from him. He should. Tim Tebow should get a half a reception for that. Um, it was, there was a lot of overreacting, myself included. Uh, but there's a lot of talk too that like maybe this is the best quarterback class of all time. That was also thrown out there. Oh, it's a big time. The league, the future is bright for the NFL right now. Good hands. Yep. They're in good hands. And throwing Jordan Love, too, who looked okay, even though he had to have an MRI afterwards, which came back clean. But why are you getting an MRI? Yeah, there's nothing to be worried about. Hmm, interesting. He's just getting an MRI. Interesting. Um, The only other note I had from preseason football is the taunting rule fucking sucks. Yeah. It's going to be brutal. And we're going to all, it's going to be similar. What was the rule that they implemented a few years ago that we basically complained out of the league? It was the, um, with the pass interference reviewable penalty was one, right? No, but that one, that one we unfortunately had to deal with for a full year. There was something that, that they there did. There was uh, uh, targeting on the offense, like lowering the crown of your head. People yeah. were like, you're going to call that on every single run. There was some rule that I remember having, having to deal with it in the preseason in the first few weeks, and then we just complained it away. We need to do that with the taunting rule. It is the dumbest rule ever it's there was it, the, the Colts game was when the, a running back um I can't remember who it was LeMay maybe he ran for a nice first down got up flexed 15 yard penalty and if you saw the way that the ref threw the flag on that I actually have a problem with the ref if you're going to expect these guys to not taunt after play as an official you have to hold yourself to the same standard the ref did one of those things where he threw the flag as high as he could in the air yes could have landed on anybody it was very dangerous was like playing lawn darts with the thing and if you're a ref and you're calling a taunting penalty you need to not taunt while you're calling that penalty correct and if you do taunt you should get a penalty yes and so you should have to go the take a seat on the sidelines. players should get flags. The, yeah, the players should get a flag. Every player should have one flag. Or, you know, no, give it to the coaches. Yeah, no, but they will, They they can't. You think that like Belichick will be able to tell the difference between the red and the yellow flag? Like he's, he's just not he's grabbing anything out of his. That's true. He's not. He's just grabbing anything out of his sock <laughs> in disgust. All right, then it should be um, the coach's son. Perfect. The coach, so Steve Belichick should yeah. have the flag. Just run around with a flag, be able to flag the official. Deuce Gruden should have the flag. It was great though. Like preseason football, um, you can't tell anything, but you also, like I said last week, you can just look at it however you want. Like I, 
I watched the whole Bears game, and I watched Justin Fields be electric, and everyone's like, well, dude, it's against the second-team defense. I don't give a fuck. And then I watched Trey Lance, and I was like, well, he kind of sucks. Everyone's overreacting because he had an 80-yard pass. Yeah, but that so, was the best. Yeah. I, but I, oh, that's, I, that's, just, that's just how you watch preseason. I'm digesting the preseason by only watching the highlights that the, uh, that the NFL main account tweets out. If I'm not specifically watching that game, I will only know what you did in that game by your most spectacular highlight. So if we're going off that, I would say Trey Lance, number one, Justin Fields, number two, Trevor Lawrence had that one pass. Yes, where the 35-yard pass. The entire stands stood up, and their mouths were wide open like they had never seen a quarterback before. Yep. It is Jacksonville. It's been a couple years since Blake was in town. Mm-hmm. But they were they flipped out, so I'm going to put that number three. And then uh, Sam Ellinger had a really good yes. run. Right, Billy? Billy is, is amazing re- <laughs> debut. <laughs> amazing debut. Amazing. And his hair looks awesome. It's, he's got, like, the spiky kind of punky quarterback look going. I'm just going to put this one in, in the tickler. I think I'm going to zig well everybody's eggs. I think Mac Jones might be the rookie of the year. Oh, because okay. He looked good, too. He he looked good. He wasn't spectacular. No. But Belichick doesn't need him to be spectacular. Yeah. Just manage the game. If if Mac Jones goes – oh, fuck, I'm going to have to do math. If Mac Jones goes – Probably he's not going to start, right? Maybe Pro- he will. Prob- I don't know. Probably not. Cam Newton, I noticed that his past didn't look like he had completely forgotten how to throw football. Yeah. So he's maybe a little bit better than he was last year. But let's just say Mac Jones gets in after this, like week four. If he gets in week four, then how many games? 13 games? Yeah. If he goes nine and four, see, I think if, I think he gets rookie of the it, year. But I think if Trevor Lawrence throws more than 20 p- touchdown passes, he gets rookie of the year. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because it always, especially because the Jaguars, the, he's not expected to win. He just has to worry about stats. Yeah, if Drew Locke is kind of in a rookie season again. Yes. I noticed that. We're just treating every Jordan year. Jordan Love in another rookie season. Every year it's like, Drew Locke, you know, he's a young kid. Yes. He's still learning how to play he this game. He did throw that one bomb, which looked good. No, he looked pretty good for a rookie, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yes, for a rookie, he looked good. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm still going to go with Mac Jones as, okay. as my rookie of the year. I got something. Yeah, the Ravens have won 18 straight preseason. I saw games. that. Yes, it's pretty it's crazy. crazy. Dynasty. It's nuts. Har- Harbaugh is not taking his foot off the gas. But Jameis Winston looked good. Jameis Winston looked good. He Start did. Jameis Winston. I saw. I saw some some bad news though. There was one article that said that Taysom Hill is the. He's the assumed starter for the year. That's bullshit. That's, it is bullshit. Hashtag start Jameis. It's bullshit. Give me Jameis. Feed me Jameis. How can you start Taysom Hill? Because then you can't use him for the gadget plays. Right. Like, you need to start Jameis just so that you can bring it. Well, Even start Jameis, do it like do it like start Jameis and then take him out after the first series and have Taysom Hill. Just let Jameis start, though. Jam- Jameis is kind of a gimmick quarterback, too. He is like a gadget himself. Yeah. He's a walking gadget. They're both changes of paces from each other. Right. So just, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, go old school, like, college football. Let them let him split it up by quarters or drives. Why don't we have them both on the field at the same time? That works, too. I'd be I mean, they that. did that last year with Drew Brees and Taysom. Yeah. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Um, all right, anything else? I, I mean, it's fun to see football. It does feel a little weird when you invest, like, a few hours. You're like, okay, mm-hmm. and that didn't matter. Yeah. Like, that, like, like even, even little things where they're – you know, downing the ball with with way too much time left. You know, not even trying to win games, like weird shit like that. You're like, oh yeah, this game doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. It, it is kind of a throwback if you're having to watch the game on like normal channels. By normal channels, I mean not the red zone. Yeah. So if they're airing like a game on NFL Network and then a game on CBS, having to time the uh, return from commercial break, break thing, yeah, where you get back to the game right before the snap happens. I'm really good at that. I haven't gotten to flex that muscle in a long time because I'm a red zone guy for the most part. And when we're in the office, we've got all the TVs set up. But it's good to just like smash that last channel yes. button. I don't yes. get en- enough practice with that. S- seriously though, dude, at least the third week of preseason should be all Sunday games with a Sunday night game mm-hmm. and let us practice. It was very cool to see Ryan Fitzpatrick in a Washington football team uniform. Yeah. I didn't know how he was going to look. He's worn almost every other uniform in the NFL. He looks awesome in the burgundy. He looks good in anything. Yeah. You could put him in any uniform and he'd, he'd look like normal. Um, all right. Other big news coming from the weekend. Our lacrosse team, the Water Dogs, are number one seed. Mm-hmm. And that's talking lacrosse. Job done. Yeah. I mean, we they sucked. They were terrible. We negged them into being good. We told them to shoot more. They now lead the league in shooting. Uh, I didn't even watch because I knew they were going to win. That's how that's how good hands they're in now. It's I don't a, even watch. I, I, I well also because football's back, so it's like even preseason football's better than yeah. lacrosse. But I still knew that they were going to win. 
real sports are happening. So right. you don't need to watch. We can follow along online and figure out what's going to happen. But it is us against the world. Like, nobody believed in the Water Dogs. No one did. Yeah. The mainstream media, all these talking heads that have podcasts out there, just hated the Water Dogs. Mm-hmm. And you know what? The boys persevered. Yeah. So back They fought the through the hate. You know what? A hungry dog is a dangerous dog. That's true. Don't feed your dogs in Two the morning. Two wins away. Just feed them all at night. Don't Bye feed to them. the semifinals. They Bye play. to the semifinals? Yeah. We're in the semis? Yeah, two wins away from winning the whole thing. So problem again, yeah. though, and I don't... Listen, you, everyone should watch lacrosse because we do own the team, but pretty sure the, sure, pretty sure the playoffs are on an NFL Sunday. No, so yeah. the semifinals are on Labor Day weekend. And oh, then okay, the, so we'll watch. Win, All right. The championship, so actually, noon, week two, NFL Sunday. If the Water Dogs want to uh, be the best dogs possible, they would lose in the semifinals. So we don't have to watch them in the finals. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it right now. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, that would be, I could spin that as, hey, that was a gross season. You can't win it. You can't win the whole show in your second year. Worst case scenario is. Sounds like you don't want them to win. No, no, no. No, no, I don't. I I just said I do not. I don't want to have to be burdened with them on an NFL Sunday. Worst case scenario is they win the semifinals, they make it to the finals, and then they embarrass us on yeah. an NFL Sunday. Yeah, yeah but and then throw us all the way off when we're having to like get focused and think about what we're going to bet on for the afternoon games. We can't be dealing with the mental anguish of our water dogs shitting the bed. I'm no time expert, but doesn't uh, football not start till 1? Football starts And what time's the one. game? The championship game's at noon Eastern. So can they get the game in in 45 minutes? Get halftime. Get running well, clock. If they could get the game in in Let's 45 minutes, I'm going. in. I'm in. I'm in for yeah. that game. If Just hurry it up. If they get to the championship, can Jake and I go? Yeah, sure. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. It's NFL Sunday. That would be the dumbest decision of your life. You can go, but you'll be fired just for making a terrible choice. Billy, yeah. PMT is our obligation. Well, I know, but we'd be back by... When? Yeah, Billy, you'll be back. You'll be right on time. <laughs> you can go. You can, you can go. Yeah. I will just judge you as a human being. Yeah. I'll put it this way. We'll I- have it on... A- I was going to say a TV, but we're not. We'll have it on a laptop if they get to the finals. I don't think that anybody should watch the finals unless Jake is announcing them. Oh. Wanna I play personally a hardball with them. I might I might boycott the I still want to watch it because it's NFL Sunday. No, I'll but, watch. Yeah. It. We'll put it on one of the televisions if Jake I mean, is it's announcing. either me or Siciliano. Oh god. <laughs> Lacrosse or Siciliano. The rock in a hard place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. The devil's make choice. It tough. Mm. Death is death an option? You want. Okay. I, I did notice that our friend Randy Scott at Suey ESPN Bird. had some yeah. bad words to say about us. Yeah. He said that ownership suspect. was suspect. Randy, listen, we're on good terms with you, Randy. We like you, Randy, but we will turn on you so fucking fast. We'll put you in that Siciliano bucket. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna get an opinion about you, which you don't yeah. want. Which is an opinion about you. Right now is my opinion of Randy Scott is he's a nice guy. Yeah. Good I guy. like I like Randy. Good guy. But I don't love you. If I have to think about you, Randy Scott, like for more than a minute, it's gonna get bad. It's gonna turn bad <laughs> on you. Fast. Um yeah, we're not suspect. Suspect of being great owners. It's us against you know what? It really is. It's not even the team against it's me and you against the world yes, at this point. Absolutely. We've got, Hank is too. Hank's and, an owner. and Hank we've got we've got ESPN hating on us. We've got our own Twitter account. Fucking being part of the lamestream media hating on us. Are you not? They're fake news. Are you not an owner? Hank, are you are you an O word? I still have to sign the thing. You haven't signed the paperwork. Okay, All right. Sign the papers. Sign the papers. Me and Big Cat, we signed in blood. Yes. Blood in, blood out of the owner water. Owner forever. Uh, all right. Um, let's do who's back of the week, and then we'll get to Jim Calhoun. By the way, uh, yeah, let's do who's back of the week, then we'll get to Jim Calhoun. I was going to say something, but we're going to save it for uh, after the Jim Calhoun interview. Uh, who's back of the week is brought to you by the Cash App. Cash App is back. You can buy and sell uh, stocks, Bitcoin, all of it with the Cash App. It is the best app in the world. Also, links directly to your bank account. And if you want to need to send money to friends, family, whoever, the Cash App is the way to go. It is about to be fantasy football season. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that you can play for money, but if you can and you want to use the Cash App, it's super easy to send money to people. And you can link up to people. It's very, very easy. So invest through the Cash App. Buy and sell Bitcoin through the Cash App. Download the Cash App and enter referral code BARSTOOL. You receive $10, and they will now send $10 to ASPCA when you download Cash App from the App Store or Google Play Store today. Here's a little fun thing I just thought of. 
for your fantasy league, you should uh, send the money to whoever's running the league. They should use all that money and buy Bitcoin. And then it's just another, it's like, who knows? At I, the end of the season. I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. or, do, or Doge. Yeah, like what's good? No, don't, we're not pumping that anymore. Why? Doge oh, is up. It's back. back. It's back. Dude, Doge is up did like Elon 20% the right now. Mark Cuban did the tweet. Fuck yes. Mark Cuban's been gassing the shit out of Doge. That Very was a good really boy. smart thing I just threw out there that I hope that I'm allowed to say. Uh, okay. Who's back of the week? Henry. Uh, I had- How's your wiffle ball game? We lost in the Sweet 16. God good, damn Good, good run though. But you've won it before. We've won it before. It's it's an extremely hard tournament to win. How uh, many? What was the youngest person you played against? Probably like 18. Really? I thought you played against some like 13 year olds. No, it's gotten more competitive. Okay. Over there. Right. Some there are. There's probably like I don't know. It's a 64 team tournament, so there's probably like 10 teams of like young people. Some teams with all girls. Uh, but no, we. I, I also was gone for most of the day. I came back for the playoffs. Are there one, any brawls? One one playoff game. There actually was a brawl. There was an old guy, Hell uh, yes. absolute asshole. He just throws too hard. It's a charity tournament. Everyone's like, dude. <laughs> he's playing with his two sons. Like, dude, what are you doing? We we've had problems with him in the past. That guy whole, has whole big thing. He lost the championship though. Do you know what though? I respect that guy because he's got no. issues nope. that he has unattended for many many years, and he just takes him out in a charity wiffle ball tournament every year. That guy and his family—they're the o- O'Doyle family. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But they, but you know what I mean? Like, he probably should have seen a therapist a while ago. He has decided not to go to BetterHelp if you want to. No, just watch Ted Lasso. Yeah, but you're watching. Ted Lasso, uh, or follow our friend B.W. Carlin. It's okay to not be okay. Or you could just go to a charity wiffle ball game and fight with everyone and throw gas. Yeah, just throw absolute or gas. It's, 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 it's either pitch, or. Yeah, yeah, it's either or. You don't have to say it's okay to not be okay because I think there's a better way around that. It's just saying positive vibes only. Yeah, positive vibes only. So if you only. say positive vibes only, then you don't even have to worry about not being okay. Yep. Shout out to the Connor brothers, back to back champs. They were my neighbors growing up. A I'm dynasty? Not, I'm not going to say that I influenced them because I, you know, I played with their cousins growing up and they were too young to even play and they just watched us. I'm not going to say I inspired their passion for the game and I'm the reason they won back to back championships. Mm-hmm. But I kind of am. Dynasty? I like that. They've won two. There's been a couple back to back champs. I don't think anyone's won three. So okay. we'll see next Interesting. year. Interesting. You're like Jimi Hendrix to John Mayer. If it weren't for you, there would be no them. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. It's beautiful. Uh, but speaking of brawls, fights in the stands, we talked about it before, but the video is great. I, the the lady, it's one of those things where you see the video and then the, the other video comes out of the lady just taking the Coke and throwing it and just yeah. like literally just a match throwing it into a gasoline yes. thing and just turns into a brawl. The guy put up a good fight. He had the upper ground and he was... I don't know what you would call his punches. Well, he did a full was, it back. Was like, it was like a windmill. Yeah, he, he, did, he, f- he punched four people with one punch. He did a full, like, how can you slap backhand uh, across the entire row. I also, uh, in listen, there's going to be fights in NFL stadiums, but it felt a little wrong. Like, that stadium's new. It's like going to a new house and ruining it. You know what I mean? Wait a couple years. Let it... Let it let it like work itself in. You know what I mean? When you see a fight in like the o- Oakland Coliseum, you're like, okay, makes this sense. makes sense. Or in Philadelphia, but like this one. But it's like, like who's who's? It's a new house. Take your shoes off. Yeah, but whose house is it? Yeah, that's that, true. They're trying to that figure that true. out. Yeah. yeah. So I I actually think that. But fight, I think it might fighting have been Rams in public, fans on Rams fans. Fighting in, f- yeah, fighting in public <laughs> should be allowed as long as you all agreed no face shots. Mm-hmm. You could just you should be well, allowed to just body everybody up all day long. It's called the we we all have to go to work on Monday rule. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. kidney shots, that's fine. Wedgies. Break a, break a couple ribs, go for it. Kick some shins. Maybe one knee to the balls, that's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. In the late stages of the fight. Yep. But yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, cool. Good who's back. Awesome. PFT, awesome who's, who's back. back. Appreciate it. Uh, my who's back of the week is the Taliban. Yeah. The Taliban's back big time. Um, Unfortunately, they so, are. So the United States were evacuating Afghanistan. The Taliban is in the process of taking back over the country. Hank's shaking his head like, no, no. No, I'm not. Yeah, it's no, true. I'm just, is this hard factor? It's true. Yeah. No, I mean, are yeah. you saying the Taliban's not back? Did they ever leave? No, well, no, that's they, good, they, good point. So good pro- point. So Hank. probably this Hank's is way, actually a scholar here. This is way too smart of, of a subject yeah. for us to really understand. The best way to describe it would be through a series of the office gifts. So if you were to describe the Afghan war, we were Michael when the fire came. Michael, yeah, Michael. When, well, initially, yeah, we're Michael when the fire came at first, and then uh, we were Kevin spilling the chili, and then we were uh, Dwight and. Michael raising the roof after we won, mm-hmm. and then Michael snip, snap, snip, snap, and then Michael showing off his tiny little television, the R. Kelly television, and that's Obama's drone strike program, being like, I got this. And then uh, 
at the end, it's how long did you think about this this just, weekend? I, no, I thought about it on the way into into the office. Got today. it. Okay. And then at the end, it's uh, the senile old CEO getting pushed out, and that's Joe Biden. And the Taliban is now hosting the meeting. Got it. Boom. That's all you need to know about Afghanistan. Okay. So yeah, the Taliban is back. PFT is celebrating. Uh, also, my <laughs> other who's back is just baseball. Major League yeah, well, I was back. my. Can I do it? Who's back? Oh, yeah, I thought you were going to go Taliban. No, so that's I was going to go you. baseball okay. because the Thursday night game. Yeah. We taped early. We were up in Connecticut uh, after our Jim Calhoun interview, but that game was fucking awesome. The Field of Dreams game. I. It's rare that baseball does something that everyone is like, "Holy shit, this was incredible." They did it. That was fucking sick. And the uniforms were awesome. And Tom Verducci was living out his like greatest fantasies by dress, dressing up as an old-timey reporter. By the way, Home he, runs into the cornfield. He, he had that outfit ready to go. He didn't have to go out and buy that. Yeah, no. He's, he got, was, he's got a closet. He was waiting for the day funny for that to Yeah, and then uh, obviously Tim Anderson hitting the walk-off was incredible with the fireworks and everything. I know so that, good job, baseball. Good job, baseball. You know that, and the taunting. And the taunting, yeah. yes. And you know that Rob Manfred's going to be like, we're going to mandate corn be planted in every outfield. He's going to ruin he's gonna it somehow. Overdo, yes. He's going to overdo the field of dreams. Um, it was a great game, though. It was yeah, it so was. awesome to watch. It was It was cool. It was awesome. Um, Tony La Russa looking at the corn and being like, I could make, just give me a bonfire and some metal. I'll make a still out here in center field. Yeah. He's, uh, Tony La Russa, God, he's, he's going to win manager of the year. He is. Like, that's going to be so funny when that happens and everyone's going to be what do we do now? There's something about baseball where actually, like, the drunkest team that fights the most is usually the team that wins. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is about the sport, but I love it. Um, all right, Jake, you're who's back of the week. Uh, who's back of the week, unfortunately, is father time because Roger Federer has opted out of the U.S. Oh, Open. Oh, no. He's getting knee surgery. Jake. He's out for many months, so Damn. some are saying this is the what beginning of the end. So Djokovic is healthy, though? I believe he's playing in Mentally the U.S. Open that's coming up in a few weeks. Interesting. So, so this, this is sad. You don't. How old is is Federer right now? He's forty. Forty. A, a forty-year-old doesn't really get knee surgery and then be like, okay, I'm ready to come back. It's not like an Adrian. Peterson no, I'm situation. sure it's just, it's just a little cleanup. You think so? Yeah, it's cleanup. Okay. Right. He'll be back. He said he's out for many months. Oh, what a many shame. months! And Djokovic is going to keep on trucking. You can't celebrate this. Oh, I absolutely can. It's sports, baby. <laughs> My guy is going to win it all. Is Djokovic allowed in the United States? Yeah. Why weeks? wouldn't he be? Are we sure? Are yeah. we going? The U.S. Open? No. Yeah, totally. No. I'll be there. It's unfortunately when they're At playing, point, yeah. there's a lacrosse game on, so I, I can't make it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's unfortunate. Shame about that. It actually is. For the sport. For the sport. Yeah. I agree. Talk. It does. It is sad. He's a legend. Yeah, I, a legend was what you took the words out of my mouth. Go. I can think of all the times that I watched Federer play. That one time when Djokovic beat him in Wimbledon, that was pretty much the only time. And I have nothing but fond memories. So hopefully he's good in retirement. Is he the or only? Or he comes back. Or he, he comes come back. back. Is, is he the only Swiss person that you can name? Mm. I don't think that there's another. I think it's Stan just, Fabrinka, another. Where, what about Caroline Wozniacki? Is she? Is she? Is she active? Swiss? Or Swiss? No, she's Swiss. No, I don't think so. The Swiss she used Miss to Lady. Date, uh, oh, yeah. She's Danish. Danish. Danish, that's the same, same thing. shit. Yeah. Come on, they're both red and white flags. Yeah, yeah that's, that's like much come identical. on. Yeah, that's, just North Switzerland. So yeah. hopefully, Fed comes. If back the to Danes see. had come up with a fucking cool, uh, you know, knife before the Swiss, we would be talking about them today. Yeah, or if the Swiss had learned how to clap in an aesthetically pleasing way. Yes. So yeah, same thing. All right, Billy, you're who's back of the week. My who's back of the week is bulking season. <sighs> Summer is winding down. Our friend Roan commented that since. It was time. What? What? We talked about this, I think, on, on Friday's show, but that's okay. Well, it was in follow up to. Follow up. Oh, okay. Follow -up. This is a yeah, follow up. So it's, uh -huh. yeah, follow -up it's like an to encore to the song. Yep. I think that we should all just start bulking. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, d that's not hard for me. I've I know, decided. It's football season. I've decided to lose weight. Oh. But I'll probably be going back on that week three. But it's a good Hank's time. Hank's going to get a six-pack. We're going to be on a caloric. If we want to just redo the whole segment. I Hank, is, are you going to get a six-pack? Great week next year. Can I call it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I actually have come when up with. I said with, it. I really meant it. I've well, come up with my own didn't happen. Big Ben 7 diet that I think that we can stick to. Oh, you wait. Just, the food's here. You just. Food, oh, this is perfect. Okay. <laughs> We're going to be operating Hello? a caloric surplus. <laughs> it's going to be after Grit Week that will start. 
Yeah, all right, we're coming out right now. Uh, our our order of like 500 chicken wings just showed up. We're going to be operating a caloric surplus, so we have to do power lifting <laughs> so workouts. Okay. Yeah, all right, we're ready to, to put on good mass. All right, so what I'll be doing is I'm going to be doing um, just I'll eat a salad for lunch every day. And then on Sunday, that's my cheat day. I'll eat whatever I want. Okay. And then don't ask me what I eat on Saturdays. That's my diet. That works. That works. All right, Billy. Good. Who's back? Can you go get the uh, food? Yeah. All right. Awesome. After, yeah, we're going to bulk. That's perfect. We're going to bulk. All right. Let's get to our interview. We have Jim Calhoun. Great, great interview. Sat down with him in his office for a while. We are brought to you by our friends at Chevy. Chevy Silverado is the greatest Silverado ever created. It is the best truck ever. Hands down, it is strong, advanced, dependable, hardworking. Silverado is dependable like the people who drive them. The design is big, bold, and commanding, and this truck turns heads. A partner with grit and determination, anything is possible, and Silverado is a partner in that, whether it be tailgating, hauling, towing, off-roading, moving day. How about a tailgate when you're, when you're showing up on a nice, crisp fall day? And you and you take the uh, you know you load up the Chevy Silverado and everyone hangs out around the back of the truck. That is what I'm talking about. Chevy Silverado, the greatest truck ever created, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. If you're thinking about buying a truck, you have to buy a Chevy Silverado and say promo code take and they'll give you a hundred dollars off your Chevy Silverado. We're also bought, brought to you by our friends at Cross Country Mortgage. Cross Country Mortgage are a people first group of people. Rates are unbelievably low right now. Don't pay the bank the money that you need. Mortgage should not be a scary word, Jake. Uh, stop throwing away your rent. Talk to someone at Cross Country Mortgage. They can help game plan for you so that you can someday own a home. And if you if you were looking to refinance, if you own a home right now, Cross Country Mortgage also is the place to be. I just got that. The joke about Jake. Yeah. That's mean. Yeah. But funny. Say it. I but fixed it for the say championship it. Say it. video. Say it. Say it. Mortgage. Say it how you said it the first time. Mortgage. Okay. <laughs> uh, rates are at all time low. They may never get this low again. Call today for a fast free rate quote. Our partners will save you a lot of money. Call today and our friends at Cross Country Mortgage will give you a free home valuation that is free to you just for calling. Just like the all-star athlete, Cross Country Mortgage pushes themselves through the entire lending process. If they get blocks, they figure out ways around to get the ball over the line, so don't miss the window as rates are expected to creep up. Reach out to them and see what they can do for you, and when you connect with Cross Country Mortgage, tell them Barstool sent you. Go to crosscountrymortgage.com slash barstool to learn more about your future home buying experience or refinance your current mortgage. Cross Country Mortgage LLC, NMLS 3029. All loans subject to underwriting approval, www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Okay, here he is, Jim Calhoun. Okay, we now welcome on a very, very special guest. It is a basketball Hall of Famer, three-time national champion. I know you're going to want me to list the Big East championships, too. By, by year, please. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> 10 Big East regular seasons, seven Big East tournament. Because I think I, we'll get to it, but I think that actually might mean more than the national championship cool. deep down. It is uh, Coach Jim Calhoun. Uh, thank you for joining us. We My really pleasure. appreciate it. This is the start of Grit Week. We figured you'd be the perfect guy to start off Grit Week because you embody grit and hard coaching and you know hard work. So I, we ask this to every guest we have on Grit Week. What does grit mean to you, and what does it look like on the basketball court? He probably like says, get your fucking ass up the court, you know, I mean, and, and with a smile maybe at times too. My point being is simply is that life's something you need to attack, you know, and I've always felt this, that if you don't do it, okay, someone else will and, and beat you. And so I've always been, it, it probably is kind of a life story and you don't want to hear the whole life story, but, you know, losing your dad at 15, uh, getting a full scholarship to UMass, but in turn having to come home and work for two years as a stonecutter, that kind of gave you some grit. <laughs> it's going to give you some grit. And that means you get up in the morning and have to do the things that are pissed off at the world, go into Charlestown, maybe get in a fight, do the things that guys do at that day and age and all the Fighting was pretty good. I was actually not bad because I was a PAL boxer when I was a kid. Point being, though, with four sisters home, a five-year-old brother, who now is, by the way, a cardiologist at Mass General, point being is, is that I had a responsibility early. And kind of the only way you get going, my high school coach was great, and a lot of the tendencies I have as a coach, he was there for me the whole time after I played for him, after I came home. And he says, you're going to get the hell out of this town before you get some girl pregnant and you're here for life. It's a great message. And he didn't really have the smooth, my dad was incredible, you know, he had a Merchant Marine Academy graduate, engineer, incredible guy. Losing him was a big facet. I had a great mother, 
My dad was like Cary Grant, the, the actor, kind of tall, silent guy. He was the light heavyweight champ, by the way, of the American Marines, which got to do with the boxing. And uh, he ended up being superintendent for the gas company in the whole area. And when he died, he took a big part of me. And my, my, my mother was, you guys won't know this, you kind of know it, maybe, Goldie Hawn. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. blonde, cute, all that kind of stuff. Anyways, my dad had lost his wife and childbirth of my older sister. So it's a family that, but we stayed together. And through those years, stone cutting, find out who I was, find out who I was not. And then my high school coach pushed my ass to get to college, went back, and things worked out pretty good for me. But all that time, trying to find out who I was, how do I get there? And people said, where? I don't know. Just be better today than you were yesterday. And they have a saying that I did years, I, we had a book about it too, uh, uh, you know, win every day. And I know you might have heard those things, but I was saying that years ago without knowing what it meant. And I didn't really say it per se, but maybe I'd start reading again out of high school. Maybe I'd start running again. Maybe through picking up 100 pound markers, that's without an hour. Markers up, and uh, every day I'd go from 183 pounds to about 200 by the time I got to college and looking a little different. Okay? Yeah. And my point being, it was all grit. It was all hard work. And, and I didn't have automatic answers. It wasn't like you go to college, you take this course, this course, bang, degree, here you go. It wasn't like that at all. I was trying to find who I was, what I was. And I know I, one thing, I didn't want to go to a shed <laughs> at 5 a.m. start cutting stone and picking up markers and doing those things. And I wanted to get out of there. I remember an old Italian guy who was a tool maker, makes the beautiful things you see on, on the tombstones said to me, don't bang your hands up, you'll feel them when you're 50. He was right about that. But more importantly, he said, you want to get out of here. And I, he was a, just one of those guys who had philosophy, still broken with the broken English, okay? Italian accent, you want to get out of here. And uh, I got out of there. And I got back to college through help of my high school principal and my coach. And, but I can tell you all, it was a fight. When people saw me, I guess, fighting, if you kind of, if they, I didn't ask them to, I didn't want them to, they kind of went back and say, this guy's had a little kind of different life than your average kid, goes to college, scholarship, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's kind of what my grid is. My grid is finding a way when there doesn't appear to be one. Finding a way uh, when, when uh, nobody else thinks you can. Was that motivation? Yeah. yeah. I'd be a son of a bitch yeah. lying to you right now if I told you that, that, that okay, you think I can't? I might die doing it, but I can. Yeah, I think you've got all of America ready to run through a brick wall right now. I think <laughs> That's that. Well, yeah. we all, but we all face that. I face cancer. You know, I face cancer a couple of different times. Sure. Uh, I face some other things in my life, and I just think simply that the idea, you know, I don't want to be ever judged. Sometimes what I say, like get your fucking ass up to court. I want to be judged on, you need me. Hey Ben, uh, good, and uh, whoever it may be, when you need me, call me. I'm here for you. I don't need Kimber when he's, Kimber doesn't need me, excuse me, when he signed a $138 million contract. I called him right after they, they traded him from Boston. That's kind of who I, he didn't, you know, going back to New York, I'll get out, I'll go to practice, et cetera, but he don't need me right this time. I just thought after that he could trade it, it was a good time to call him. Yeah. It wasn't a change, he's still gonna make a lot of money, he'll still be the great Kimber he is, or any of my other guys. I wanna be there when they need me, just like my high school coach and others, my sisters, my sister did everything for me to help me get back to college. And I think that sometimes I don't want to be understood to some degree. I just want to be accepted for what I've done and all the people in my life. Yeah, okay, I love it. I love uh, it. You mentioned win every day. I see you've got a, a bottle of sanitizer over there that says win the day. I've heard you say win the day probably hundreds of times. Yeah. Um, what, wh how do you know if you're, if you're beating the day? Are you, are you winning against the day or what are you winning? No, you, you, you always fight yourself. We screw up our, our lives more than anything else. I guarantee you that. True? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah I mean, yes. doing this yes. It's really true. So you are in control of what you do. Your destiny is what you're going to do. Now, what are you doing today to get better? I, you know, well, obviously you're here talking to somebody, doing your job, I guess it may be. But how do you enhance your life when you don't have that time? Or when you guys weren't big deals? Right. I haven't had a carb yet today. It's like 10.30, so I think as of right now, I, I'm winning the day. I only hit my snooze twice this morning. That's, That's pretty great. good. Yeah. You guys are making great progress. Uh -huh. I want to tell you right now. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it in the room. We've got a 28 to 3 lead against the day right now. No, but it could mean anything when you don't have anything. And you say, you know, when I ask these particular questions, let me listen to this other guy, see how he does it. 
let me try to, and I don't mean like, I, 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 you know, I've stolen from the very best. I watched, I watched what Dean did, and the game was very simple for him. He was, he was obviously very innovative. Dean Smith, who we became very close to. I, I, I watch people because I really want to learn from other people and then adapt it to who I am. And I think the, the biggest fool is say, well, I did it all myself. Bullshit. The reason I have a house in Hilton Head and a house down in, uh, in Point Judith, played the uh, Donald Ross golf course and all the other things, is my kids. If, I, if I'm not available for them, then I betrayed what I said to them the first day. If I recruit you now, I'm going to recruit you for a lifetime. I'll be here when the ball doesn't bounce anymore. I want you to understand that. And I just think that winning the day takes all, all kinds of different things. And I think that's very, very important to everything in your life. And, you know, do we all have moments of despair? Without question. Do we all have moments of questions? That people are very kind in talking about some of the things I've had to fight back from, especially when the, the SB and the ESPN stuff did all that story. And, that, and that's cool. But we have moments of, in a car someplace saying, the fuck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. What the? Here I am, seventy-nine years old, driving to to St. Joe's to to coach a game. Yeah. And then I realize that these kids, that they need me. Well, I don't think they desperately need me, but I do know this much. I had good people at a point in my life when I when I, when I used some direction. And for a lot of my players, they have some of similar circumstances without having maybe having a male or other type of leadership in the house. I one of my kids, quite frankly. Uh, family lives in quite a distance from here. You don't need a place to go. And I think that's really important. I think, I, and, and when I get satisfaction, you said, you know, what's a win? That might be a win. Yeah. Like that phone call. Hoping these guys, you know, someone's talking about the here because we're in our women's program and trying to get the kids more help. I said, no, understand, these dudes are going to be different. <laughs> these aren't going to be Sally <laughs> from, from Simsbury. He's right. going to be a kid from the heart in the city who's trying to, in many ways, at times, get over. Yeah. You don't understand that. And, and, and because that's the way to get by. I had it one time went from, like, the kid in the block whose family had the, one of the first TVs. I know that makes me ancient, because I am. <laughs> but my point being, to, to a guy then who didn't have much money, to when my dad had died, it wasn't like all the stuff, the pensions didn't work, I mean, all that. My mother having a very difficult time. We had some really, really, really difficult financial times where things weren't, didn't go well at all. My mother was still a saint. Yeah, and my, my my point to all this simply is that if you can be there for somebody, that's a big deal, by the way. Yeah, one person, if you can be there for them, I'll tell you one thing you don't realize about 2013. They had a testimony to our program and what it did, and all the guys who have high school teams I coached, kids from Northeastern University where I coached, and a whole bunch of my former players. When they started telling stories, uh, my throat got dry. My eyes filled up, because they told me things I didn't know, things I might have said to them that, that helped change things. Mm -hmm. Things I might have kicked their ass, said, don't you bring your fucking ass back into this gym until you understand you, it's you that's fucking you up. Do you understand me? It's you that's screwing this whole deal up. I'm here for you, but, and I'll be here for you now, but as soon as that ball stops dribbling, ain't gonna be nobody there for you. It's a whole new game, man. And, and, I, and I just think, so it might be love, it might be a different kind of expression of love, but you got to be there for them. So I think grit, that's love. Yeah, I think I, that's that is a, a very pure definition of love. Actually, it's yeah, like, no hey, question. I'll, I'll tell you the truth when you need to hear the truth, and if you fall in hard times, I'm always going to be here. That's, I think that's as close to love as anything that you can get. I agree 100. percent and, and it's easy to come in and say, hey, you're wonderful, you're great, you're the big cat, whatever it may be. But man, you got to understand, you're fucking up. You're, you're screwing this whole deal up for no reason. Yeah. But no goddamn reason except your own. You have so... And then, i tell you, a number of years ago, it's kind of a correlation, and I get on the kids during the game, but it's all instantaneous. It's, understand, right after that, next play, next play, next play. And I found out you could open people's ears. So you come over to the sidelines, you can tell them what. You just like, went for a steal, the guy went and dunked. First thing I say is, you know what? You're one of the greatest players ever coached. Your ears are out here someplace. <laughs> and say, you lazy son of a bitch. Okay? <laughs> but your ears listen. Then you say, you lazy son of yeah, a bitch. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, you understand the point I'm making? I found out that when people hear kind of what they want to hear, and then the message comes afterwards, if you start off with this, this, and that, uh, it doesn't. I, and I want to tell them they are special. And you're all special in your own particular way. But you screw up too. 
Mm-hmm. You, you know, and, and you and I'm not. You know what? I'm the one guy who, when I say I'm going to coach you, I take it seriously. Yeah, I we, take this shit really seriously. Yeah. It's called a shit sandwich, where you give them something nice, the ugly truth, and then something nice on the other on end. The way out. Dessert, Dessert yeah. at the end. Yep. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I want to talk about um, Big East basketball. I know you're, like I said at the at the start. I th- I think deep down you might be just as proud, if not more proud, of the Big East titles than the NCAA titles because that stretch of Big East basketball, when you had so many legends, Hall of Famers, Hall of Fame coaches, Hall of Fame players playing in the league. Um, so you, you built UConn, you know, you came to a program that was not a lot and you made it a lot. What was it like in that era of coaching against hall of famers and building a program and watching other guys build programs like all around the league, uh, like in terms of toughness and, and what it was like to coach against those yeah, guys? Yeah. The first meeting I went to, I'd be very, we were very successful at Northeast. I went to NCAA tournament. Five out of six years, I had really good teams. I mean, we beat a great St. Joe's team, 29-1, and one, and, you know, we had success, okay? We beat uh, Fresno State with Rod Higgins and then lost to Utah. So, you know, we had really good players and got really good. So I go to, to UConn, and the first uh, coaches meeting, it was actually in Puerto Rico, still remember it like yesterday. You walk into the room, and it's rolling. There's Louis, hey, 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 Irish, hey, Irish. That was his name for me. Never call me Jim, never coach, call me Irish. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, <laughs> And so, uh, and then, and then, and, and Roly walking around and everything else, and Patino, who I don't like, he doesn't like me, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tell you one thing, a man can coach. Yeah. yeah. All the other bullshit Definitely. aside, yeah. you know, if, you're, what, you, what if you play for him, if you play for him, you got a chance to win. Yeah. yeah. I mean that honestly. You know, once again, you don't have to love everybody. Yeah. PJ Calismo, who was our social leader at the time, one of the greatest guys, he was a bachelor, you know, a guy, a friend of mine from Nike, went to his, uh, his uh, apartment to, they were go out to eat someplace, and he saw on the desk some mail. There were two Nike checks for the past four months. He, was a, he just went to his house, and he was a bad one to run his life. Right. He does now. But he means all the guys, Jimmy Bayheim, and anyways, oh, I only got a birdie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sorry for, uh, <laughs> Bayheim, come on, man. Whatever the case may be. Uh, you know, I mean, but it was a great era. And boy, do I miss it. Yeah. And boy, do we all miss it. You know, Jimmy and all of us who aren't, it's not going anymore. It's great being the ACC. It's not great. It's much better fighting your own neighborhood. The guys you know, the guys you have to recruit against. What caused the biggest problems amongst coaches? Recruiting. And then after that, recruiting. And after that, recruiting. Something is said during a, uh, a recruiting meeting that's misinterpreted. The story that people had about coach in Pittsburgh who said that... Uh, uh, that, that, that Louie had cancer and was going out of coaching, talking to a recruit. It, it, did he say, I, I have no idea, and quite frankly, just like the tide, it washed over. Yeah. But that's where, if you think some of these things develop, that's where they develop. We're going to get back to Jim Calhoun in a second, but before we do, this interview is being brought to you by our great friends over at Roman. They've got a brand new product that you guys might be interested in. The world is opening back up, so new thrills are on the horizon. So if you've been in a relationship for years, or if you're just getting started, or if you're excited to get back out there and meet new people, when the moment comes, you want to be ready. If you go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool, you can talk to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional. You can get a free online evaluation for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. Roman ready means that you're going to have confidence, the confidence that you know that you can rise to the occasion in the moment. We're looking at the summer of love, and Roman wants to make sure that you can participate in your own way. That's meaning as a single person or as a couple, uh, you can go to Roman and get some help, take care of your ED without leaving your home, complete an online visit today, talk to a U.S. licensed healthcare professional, let them take care of it. Getting started is simple. You go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool. If you're prescribed, you get 50% off your first month of ED treatment. 50% off, 5-0. GetRoman.com slash Barstool. Make sure that you're ready to have confidence and control this summer. Be Roman ready. Now, more Jim Calhoun. Well, who is the one guy who uh, someone else in the Big East got that you thought you were going to get and he turns out to be a great player and you're like, damn. Not quite I- as great, but it was Billy Curley. Billy Curley wanted to play in the NBA. But as a college player, Billy Curley was one of the best guys. So the story is that, that his dad wanted to stay around Boston, which he did eventually. And he was asked Villanova, BC, I can't think of the fourth team. Anyway, so he eliminates everybody and then went to a visit at BC for four or five hours. Hated it, went home. We're going to get that phone call. 
and he's going to call us tomorrow about 5. He gets me 5, gets me 6, gets me 7, no call. And then word gets out, he just committed to BC. And I guess, I mean, everything was set up, even the great delay, because his father's a great guy, and I love Billy Curley. He's a terrific player. One of those guys that, 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 that is, is, would, would, would win college games for you. You know, mm -hmm. played some in the NBA, but he was a terrific player, hard-working son of a gun. And I really thought we had a, we also had a, a guy you might saw in the Olympics. Kevin Durant committed to us on a visit. Ah. And Kevin Durant was that not a bad player. Can score. Yeah, he's okay. decent. Can score. I'd say. Well, if and he, he, he went on this didn't trip. do anything in the tournament. Yeah, so uh, yeah. you might have dodged a bullet on that uh -huh. one. And and we, he had he, he went on a trip. Nike arranged a trip. I believe it was to France, and they'd put together f freshmen and seniors, and they sent like twelve kids over. Well, I called the people. I said, "Look, we're recruiting a kid named Durant. His name wasn't quite that big yet. And can you move him with Rudy Gay?" Not that I was thinking about those things, but obviously only 24-7. And they get back, and when they get off the plane, they shook hands, they are going to be roommates. And then, si and then silence went away, and then he went to Texas. I noticed you didn't say Ryan Gomes. Ryan Gomes was, is a terrific kid. I've actually talked with Ryan because I said, you and I have been married in heaven. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. All> hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, it's because you, you had to understand what the horde was. There was 16... 17 daily newspapers, not like three or four now and all the different social media, et cetera. And they'd come in, and I'd have guys, I'd look at them, I'm always doing something, they'd be looking at my desk and finding things. You know, a lot of them, oh, Wojo yeah. was now on, was a pain in the ass, and playing English, he was, and uh, <laughs> uh, he wrote a time, one he wrote one time in a column, as Calhoun drove away in his Lexus, which is true, <laughs> I, was going, I, was going to, I was going out to recruiting, and all these poor kids at camp. Well, their parents are paying 200 bucks. They ain't that poor, number one. Right. Number two, it just was a stupid thing to put, like, at my camp. I went away to recruit one day. He saw me go away and left the poor kids there. We had counselors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so right. My, my point being is, is that, but, but that kind of was the, the atmosphere. If he, it, now that he's winning, let's make, he's got to be perfect and right. pure. And I got to, by the way, I need to get some words to put down. Yeah. Did so he my, expect you to, like, get into the back of a cab? And no, no, it work? wasn't just saying that. I was saying I was leaving the kids kind of the afterwards in the Lexus, he put clearly. Right. But he also thought, like, maybe I should stay at the camp all day. I know, but I had to go recruit. I mean, yeah. that's our whole lifeblood. So yeah, you got to keep the machine going. Yeah. It, it is, you know, any of these guys tell you it's 24 7. I think we all try to make it more than that. I think we try to make it, you know, 26 9 if we can. Right. Yeah. Because you can't find it enough time in recruiting. I mean, and today, it's a little different. I'm not sure it takes as much time. It takes as it takes more awareness of every piece that's moving. I have no idea when I see what 1,500, 1,600 kids transferring. Yeah, no, it's a different game. It, well, it's uh, a different game, but I, but I don't think it's a good game. And, and but I don't mean to say the game. I when kids compete, the kids compete. I still love it. When my kids play out here, they want to win too, you know. And so you still have some of the same things. The problem is. Uh, are we, in fact, making, and once again, I know some, you know, we, we took, I think, in 26 years, three transfers total at, at UConn. Not that, I feel building a program. The guy who's got it right is Jay Wright. Yeah. He discovered it through injuries, playing small, four out, because Jay's one of my favorite people of all time. He's a great guy, great coach. I don't like the son of a bitch because he's too good looking with the nice suits and yeah. the money, all that bullshit. Uh, but I keep telling you, you're not Judge Clooney. Just understand that. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so uh, so the, the Big East, obviously, like, you've got a bunch of coaches in there all coming up at around the same time. You refer to each other sometimes as being friends. But are you really friends with, uh, with like, a, a Bayheim or Bayheim's a John Thompson? John Thompson, God rest his soul. John Thompson and I are very close. When I was trying out for the Celtics, I was a free agent. And I tried out for the Celtics. And I'm going to stay over to Camp Millbrook down in Marshfield, Massachusetts. Red would have his, quote, Glamour camp down there. Red wouldn't pay for anything. So therefore, you worked. Bob Branham played for the Celtics, ran it, and you came down and you scrimmaged. And then, so we scrimmaged, and I'm going to go and take a shower, and I walk into the door. It was covered. It was John. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all 6'11, 300 pounds of him. Yeah. And from that time, we became pretty good friends. And uh, we could, when we had a, a problem with uh, Alonzo and uh, the Dove uh, Hennefeld, where they were called, supposedly names. I don't know what will happen. We can put them on the phone late that night. That's how it was done back in the day, too. Yeah. Uh, but, but friends. 
friends is a funny word, you know. Uh, I only have a couple really de- real friends. I mean, I have a lot of acquaintances, people I like, I hope they like me. But, but, but friends are a hard thing because you're doing something hard. It's not quite like boxing in the sense you're, while you're in the ring, you're trying to kill a guy, okay? But it's like boxing. <laughs> while you're there, coaching, yeah. I mean, it's competitive. And, 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 and you know, and, and, and it's not not being a good person. You still can be a good person. Just to, you know, I'm going to try to run my damn program. I don't give a shit what you guys, I'm going to run my program. Are you going to bump heads? Oh, without question. I mean, it, it, it is so set up. You know, when we first came to Yukon, we did something different. Everybody was, every, the best kids in the East we couldn't get, even out of Connecticut. Well, some of the great Charles Smith and some of these guys all went out to BC, Villanova, other places. So I said, we still get them, though. And you start thinking, where'd they come from? They came from Louisiana, Seattle, Washington, Dazelle, South Carolina, Ray. You start going where the players came from. We'll find another way. We talked before you. I'll find a way to get players to become the, at that time, find a way the Southeast Conference of Football and the Big East basketball, the two hardest things I've ever seen at that time. Yeah, six out of nine of us are in the Hall of Fame that coached in my first meeting. And I mean, like as you said, legendary guys. I always respected Rolly. He wasn't my favorite guy, but that doesn't, I'm sure I wasn't his. But my point being is that, boy, could he coach with a clock. Yeah. The moment the clock came, he became problems. And I don't mean he could really coach. (laughs) And, And everybody in that league could do something. You know what I'm saying? There was nobody that lasted long if you couldn't do something. You couldn't get players. If you couldn't coach them up once you get them, if you couldn't motivate them, you said, keep it going. Keep it going is much more difficult than building. Yeah. yeah. So was there ever a time when uh, you were approached by an NBA team that wanted you to come? And did you ever actually give it like serious consideration? Maybe, yeah, maybe I, I can coach in the league. Well, Richard Hamilton was a first draft choice. And I remember going down with the people from Washington and Wes, Ansel, and, and people, and uh, they said, would you like to coach? And Wes was living out on the farm, and just an incredible guy and great player. And, uh, you know, the more I thought about it, and for once I was rational, uh, my ego said, yeah, I can coach these guys, but it's not my personality. My personality, they're not going to take me to get your fucking ass off the court. That's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I'm a man coach. Yeah, you are. And secondly, coach, I make three times as much as you, and I'm four times more valuable. Mm-hmm. Point being... Uh, my my best thing is to take my own life experiences and attach them to a, a college kid who might need me. Yeah. Not that they, I couldn't help guys. If I ever went to the NBA, I did think about a couple things. About their, your job in the NBA is to help them make them great, help to get the minutes, help them get a long... you got enough things there, a long career. Those things are right there. Yeah, that's your job, and you got to realize that. In college, it's, it, it, it's getting them something they don't even know they want, a degree. Getting them things, maturity, a kick in the ass, all things that that happen. That, you know, some of the things that that I aspired and did uh, because of my own life circumstances. I had plenty to build off. I tell my kids all the time that I want you guys to understand. You know, there it, there's nothing racial, there's nothing regional about poverty. I've been poor. They they turned the lights up my house when I was a kid. That's my dad died. So so like. This poverty shit, I don't want to hear it. We got to find a way to get around it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I said, you're going to beat the man. You got to be somebody in position to get the man. Get yourself to that position, then you'll have a fair voice. That's an important thing. I had a great guy who eventually became the uh, chancellor of UMass Boston, Keith Motley from Pittsburgh, one of the great people I've ever met in my life. Keith was a good player for me. He was 6'7, 240. He eventually got a black belt in karate. Not a guy to screw with. Yeah. And uh, he just simply encapsulated what you're supposed to be. He eventually worked at Northeast and eventually got his PhD. And, and we used to talk about this all the time, about all the different situations that can happen to you, like all of us. And I just think it's a lot of it's from your life experiences, from where you're from. We were kidding one time. We had a gene down in Disney when I was at Northeastern. And the kids are in the store. And you know what's in the store at Disney, right? All the cameras. Mm-hmm. So... We get out, oh, go, let's get going, guys. All of a sudden, the people come out. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> Someone had put some things. <laughs> and I'm saying, you son of a bitch. The kid, get over there. And Keith said, you stupid bastard. How'd you get caught? Here's a guy with a PhD. 
His idea was you, he didn't, the kid didn't recognize the room he was in. Cameras and all that stuff. Why'd you allow that? I was pissed he had committed theft. Mm -hmm. Keith was there that he'd been stupid in a social situation. We both meant the same thing, but from a little different background. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's really important. I, you know, once again, if you ever knew what I learned from Keith Motley, from uh, Kimber Walker about dignity, Reggie Lewis about joy, some of the guys I've had, a macroga for about me not being so smart. I mean, he's the smartest <laughs> guy I ever met. He yeah, really yeah. is. I always, I always say that Bill Clinton, Obama, and Mac, and Mac. And my point is, your kids teach you so much. If you're willing to learn from them, you don't always say, oh, boy, that's, that's brilliant. God damn, he's got a better approach than I do. He could put life in boxes. If you if he's strength training, okay, don't talk to him about basketball or, or school. If he's in the library, leave him alone. Uh -huh. He's at academics. Yeah. On the court. And, 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 and those are the things that I think people can teach you. Your life experiences, your, the, the great fortunate people you are to meet, incredibly important. Okay, so you mentioned a bunch of legends that you coached. Two-part question. One, best pure basketball player you ever coached. And two, the guy that you thought you did your best job with in terms of growth, where they came in as one guy and they graduated and either went to the NBA or on with life as something totally different. Yeah, I really don't have, quote, a greatest. The greatest scorer might have been either Reggie Lewis or, 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 or Ray Allen. Yeah. Ray Allen, people had no idea what a great athlete he was. The most funky play I had, that there's no way he should have been as great as he was, and he's, he's one of my favorite people of all time, Richard Hamilton. Oh, okay. Could run forever. Yeah. People forget, two-time All-Star, MVP of the uh, Final Four. You know, he just would wear you out. We, were, we used to have the, the small guys had to run like a 520 mile or something. Richard ran like in some ridiculous, like, you know, 450 or something. Could run for, and that could tie it. Yeah. But, and, you know, yeah, I, but I would say the guys that could just score the ball. Yeah. All around player, it's hard because he had a lot of injuries. Corn Butler's right there. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much Corn Butler couldn't do. And by the way, when he left UConn, I, I you know, I went, I went to uh, Racine, Wisconsin, went into the, as he called it, the hood. Yeah, we had him on the show. He told the story. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's and he's and everybody was looking around, and I'm saying, well, "What are you looking at me for?" Yeah. Well, there's a reason. I was the only one that looked like me, <laughs> and. Uh, Karan Butler was so special as a kid, but his hands, he could grip the ball and dunk anything. He could pass it. I mean, he had an 11-year career, and now he's doing great with Miami. He was on ESPN, but one of the special guys I've had all time. As I said, you know, I, you know, I went to school like a lot of people, started some graduate work, all that different stuff, read a lot of books. The best lessons that I ever had are... And they don't know it, a lot of them, uh, other players we had. So, you know, I, you know, clearly Quran could do more things than the other player had. I, I think that, that, that uh, the guy who made the most big plays for us is, is Kimball Walker. Yeah. Right? Only because two Final Fours, national championship, and, and by the way, he did it um, by never disrupting, only, in, only encouraging. Yeah. So I have a question about that 2011 team. Yep. All-time team, all-time run. What so for people who don't remember, UConn starts the season seventeen and two. They're ranked. They go to the Maui. They win the Maui. They're playing great. End up end of January to uh, the Big East tournament. Lose seven of eleven. Yep. Start the Big East tournament. Win five in a row. Five straight days. Then go to the Nat the the March Madness. Win six in a row. So they they finish the season losing seven of eleven. Then finish the se the postseason winning eleven straight. What did you say to the guys before the Big East tournament? Because it was it felt I remember being like, oh well, UConn, forget them. They're, they're there's no they're fading at the at the wrong time here. And then everything reversed. Yeah, we were ready in person. The emergence was quickly in in Hawaii. Of, 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 in the in Maui tournament, was, and I tell this is the best one of the best Kimber stories, or maybe indicative of who he is. We're playing in Maui. We we beat a uh, really good Wichita team. We beat then Michigan State, and then we killed uh, Kentucky. Ray averages. I'm just giving you uh, Kimber averages thirty something a game. So it's over with. We get on the bus. And it's hard as hell, like it is right now, and we're waiting half an hour. MVP. National people were all there in Maui. That was, quote, the tournament. And uh, he gets on the bus. Swear to God, he's got the big trophy. MVP. The entire bus, not solicited by anybody, stood up and started clapping. Normally you might hear, hey, go ahead. No. 
the entire bus, no one said a word, get up and started clapping. And the reason that is so profound, because you know athletes, and all of us are athletes. I would have scored more if I got the ball. Yeah, he started him. He got all the minutes, whatever it may be. There was not an ounce of that on that bus. And that's, someone said to me, how much does the kids respect Kimba? That is indicative, because if you're around athletes, we all think we can do better than you. We have to. But that momentary, hourly, daily, at that particular time, saying, like, he, he did this for us. Yeah. is amazing. That kind of correlates. Eventually, we go through the season, we have injuries, and then they, at 17-2, they thought they had won the world. Yep. And we then lose a three-pointer to uh, Notre Dame. I can go right through it because we weren't that far away from being really good. My job then, wasn't magical, was to stay on their ass. I mean, different maybe than other times. But understand, you have it there. you got to put this freaking thing together and stop worrying about records. Mm -hmm. Lose a couple? Oh, like watching my Red Sox recently. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Why 20 last night? You know, why 20 runs last night? But anyways, <laughs> just give me like four to save the other, yeah. the other 14. But point being is we just stayed together. The hardest thing to do in, 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 in losing is staying together. Yeah. Well, which, which would you rather have happen? Would you rather um, like lose like the Red Sox did last night and give up 20 runs? Or would you – what's up? Oh, they scored 20. Okay, scored so, 20. so would you rather would you rather suffer a, like a bad loss – or would you rather be ha there. have a, a really close loss like a six overtime game yeah. in a tournament? I knew we were there. I didn't know we could win a championship. I'd, I'd be stupid to tell you that because we had all freshmen. And we, you know. But we did have three pros in the backcourt. Jeremy Lamb could score on anybody even by the end of that time. Shabazz Napier and Kimball Walker. Alex Uriaki, who didn't play in the league but probably should have, great, you know, averaged like 11, 12 rebounds a game. We had a shot blocker. Guy led the uh, country in, in rebounding when he transferred to Vegas, uh, Roscoe Smith. We, we had talent. We, uh, Giffy, who played in the Olympics for the German team. We are pretty good. We were young. We had to, unfortunately, we had to get punched in the face a few times and then respond. And we kind of always respond. Doesn't mean I can get on this shit. You're going to blow this, whatever it may be. But we stayed together. And you say, that, that sounds easy. It's not easy. Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible run, 11 in a row. And now I do, I'm not going to make you apologize for the national championship game, but that was maybe the worst basketball game ever played. You say so that. People, yeah, people yeah. just a refresher, no, no. UConn, Butler, UConn won the national title. They shot 9% from three. Butler, I think, shot 18% from the field. That was tough to watch. We, uh, you, I, that wasn't, I, I wasn't no, joking. Okay, that okay. was, yeah. There's a really good column I've got at some place because it's the only thing keeping me psychologically, well, not sound, but semi-sound. <laughs> and uh, remember, we blocked 12 shots. All right, so good point. We bothered, we bothered 19 shots. These are taken by the analysts. It was the most bothered shots we had all season. So we got into this shit and said, I don't care what you guys are saying. We should score on this team. We only put up 54, although we put up 30-something in the second half. I said, we're not going to let them score. Oh, and by the way, you'll notice, we don't take many threes in the second half. Take it to the rim. They can't stop us. Yeah. And eventually we wore them down. Was it a bad game? When you win the game, it's never bad. Well, I'm speaking from a place, too, that I pretty much any big game, you know, national title, championship game, I like to bet the over. So 53-41, you really feel stupid. Well, let me tell you something. Do you know what the, the great thing about what we did at UConn? We won a lot of different ways. You know, we could pressure. Okay, back in the team when, when Leighton makes a shot and all those great things, final eight run and stuff. Uh, at one particular point with a Mecca, Charlie Villanueva, Hilton Armstrong, Josh Boone, I'll keep on going, Rudy Gay, et cetera, we led the country in shot blocking nine straight years. We led the country in steals at a particular point before that. We won in a lot of different ways because the coach was halfway smart, not real smart, but halfway smart because he adapted to his talent. Fit in my system. The system is what you have. You try to get the plays you want. They've got to be tough with us, and they've got to be able to run with us. But we won a lot of different ways to get – some teams want to play the margins so close all the time, they lose in the tournament. Do you know why? Because they can't play another way. Yeah. We could have pressed, but Butler wasn't a team to press. But I knew their size, lack thereof, we can beat them inside. And my point being, we we're a pretty good team because we beat a, a pretty good Kentucky team in the semis. No, you're a great team. They're just the, that championship game but sticks no, out. But it, no, yeah. it wasn't good. But once again, we got into a slugfest. Yeah. And, and you know what? The guy who was coaching the team, 
don't know if you know, he ended up with the Celtics, had a good career there, now he's going to be a genius, in the, and he's a great guy. I love Brad a great deal. But he, got, he made sure it stayed ugly. Yeah. And, and so simply, what are you doing in a mud fight? Duck your head or you throw mud back? We found different kind of mud to throw at them, and we watered them to death. My point being, I love that. You yeah. know, and yeah. we, I'm going to steal that from you. Yeah, no, but you're right because the coaching, like we we talk about in all sports, that the best coaches they don't have a plan, they don't have a system. Their system is changes year to year, game to game, depending on the players they have. We beat uh, Gonzaga, I think it was '99, to go to the national championship, and they were an entirely different kind of team then. And you keep on going. Good coaches, okay? I mean, Dean is different because you can tell Dean's what, up there for me as far as the kind of coach he was and the kind of person he was. But they had their system. But they, you know, they got pretty much from St. Perkins to Worthy. They got a lot of the same kind of players could do it. That wasn't an ideal. We had all guards we pressed all the time. We had all great bigs. I mean, all those big guys were, were, were first-round draft choices. Yeah. And Mecca was number two in the draft. And my point being... My, my point being to this, so we had to adapt to our personnel, but keeping some things never changed. We always ran, not in that game. But if that's all we could do, we would have lost that championship. Mm -hmm. And I think that's incredibly important. It's really important to understand, you know, you get into that, it isn't like, oh, shit, we're in that. No, how do we get out of that? And mm -hmm. beat them. And that's the most thing. The thing is being pissed, God, this game sucks. It's awful. I don't want to, what are you going to quit? Go home? Take my ball? I, yeah. No, ain't going to happen. So what do you just... I, I, I had a fear going in that we couldn't pace the game. We wanted pace and space. That's us. We've been at here at St. Joseph's. We have this 90 game. Not surprising because that's how we play. My, my, my influence in basketball initially was Red Auerbach. Why did they wear black sneakers? So on the fast break, they could see the flash of the sneaker. They're the only one in basketball to wear them at the time. They got them from Converse. And my point being, I mean, all that integrated stuff I look... I worked pretty hard at, at perfect myself. I was never an excellent genius. I'm not Captain Video. That's not what I do. I find out what you can do, and then I try to beat you with what we can do, or adjust in a game that I hated in the sense of stylistically. But you know, we when we put the trophy yep, up, yep, that's it said all national matters. champ. Yep. And if I had been pissed about the game that it played, yeah, Brad would have hosted it because I I'd be fighting, mm -hmm. I'd be fighting reality. Yeah, you can't fight reality. No. Jim Calhoun is brought to you by our great, great friends over at ZipRecruiter. If you've ever had to look for a job, you know it's absolutely no picnic. You can start stress eating. Your eyes can burn from staring at job listings for too long. It takes the patience of a saint to fill out every job application. And when it comes back to hearing back about jobs, it's nothing but cricket sometimes. You can feel like a lone wolf. You can get lost in the shuffle. The general experience for looking up for a job is pretty sucky. That's why ZipRecruiter figured out a way to make it unsucky. You sign up at ZipRecruiter.com slash easy. ZipRecruiter.com slash easy. You create your free pro profile, then you get matched to great jobs, plus you get a lot more. ZipRecruiter will proactively pitch your profile to employers whose jobs match your experience. Unlike other job sites, if an actual person from the company really likes what they see, they personally invite you to apply to their job. And candidates who apply on ZipRecruiter are nearly three times as likely to get hired. You can apply with just one click. Just one click is all it takes. It's so much easier with ZipRecruiter. It's the number one rated job site in the U.S. Sign up for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash easy. Experience the better way to find a job. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash easy right now to sign up absolutely free and put ZipRecruiter to work for you. So uh, what would you say is... Maybe not. Um, maybe it's not the same team that that produced the best results. But what would you say, looking back over your career, is the best year of coaching that you did? The one that you're most proud of? That team, to some degree, because I was always, you know, grabbing a freshman. So you can try to go home if you want, son, but you need to stay here and, and become a man, or whatever the case may be. I, th I think the magical team might have been all four was a far and away when people say how talented. If we had lost the national championship, I would have been pissed. Because number two in the draft, and will go for Ben Gordon, still could have played forever. Uh, Charlie Villanueva, Josh Boone, Hilton Armstrong, uh, Marcus Williams, six first round draft choices. Not in that, not all at once, but okay. We don't have that. That's not like a, and that may be Kentucky and other teams. That's not us. And that was the best team. I should say, best talent. The best team, no question, 99. You remember Rip? 
you'll always remember Khalid Alamin. Always. Khalid Alamin is one of the great characters who ever played basketball. Yes. He, he, when I told him he started, he go, he's telling all the reporters about Ramadan, and then I see him putting, uh, you know, subs. <laughs> so like, what the hell? Come on, man! <laughs> or hot dogs before games. Uh, Ricky Moore, who's a terrific little defensive player. Jake Vosco, who did play 10 years in the league. But two really legitimate, uh, Kevin Freeman, one of the toughest guys I've ever had, made that into a 34 in two team. By the time we got to that Sunday, after being in Ohio State and getting ready for Duke, Duke didn't show up for the reason, and, and they were really good. Everybody thought they were the best. At one point, we were 24 and 0. People forgot that. You all should know this, and, and, and I do bet only on horses, but, but I've been told the greatest differential before a championship game was nine to 10 points us. Yeah, nine and a half points. You guys were nine and a half point underdogs. And we were 33 and 2. Yeah. And it, the only other team that had been number one that year. And we were so, we knew and felt each other like a pulse in a heart. We knew. So you knew if Rip wasn't doing that. I'm just saying, we brought this kid, Albert Mooring, in the championship game, had 14. We had answers, and everybody on the team, here's more importantly, accepted those answers and understood what we were trying to do. That was, that was a pretty special team. Yeah. Um, all right, so one of my favorite things is Jim Calhoun versus the media. Okay. Um, I alluded to it earlier with the Ryan Gomes. Uh, it's one of my favorite clips. There's two two that are, are my favorite, but the I fucked up, if you want to write it, write it five times. And, and I did. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I took that lousy <laughs> player, Karan Vado. What a son of a bitch I was. <laughs> How stupid can I be? And you fucking asked me about that, man? I mean, just say you're stupid. Man. Okay, we, we both go out and have a beer, okay? Yeah, well, so that's my, my... The thing that I love about you versus the media is that you had sometimes an adversarial relationship, but I always thought that like you you always were there to answer the questions. If you call me, even even I was fighting with Jeff Jacobs here at the Hafford Current. Okay, Jeff, what the fuck you want? Here you go. Right. I'll answer the question. Just don't ask me stupid questions. Don't ask me if I'm gonna give money back. And I keep saying time. that <laughs> not a thin dime. We make five million dollars at this university. You make a lot more than that. Else. Yeah, I know. I make. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite. It's, from that, I, I I make a I make a lot more than that. that and was then it. the other part line in that one that's the best is, uh, "Could you do me a favor? Why don't you shut up?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one was, and and my my grandkids tell me this, "Hey, Papa." Get some facts. <laughs> come back and see me. Yeah. Get some facts and come back and see me. Or if you'd me. like to meet me outside, understand. I'd be happy to you do that. You my too. grandson, six, 17 now. Sam has yeah. his own podcast, and he's like crazy. He would be in heaven here if he's with you guys. Well, but, you, but my point being. Yeah, I mean, you're – so, like, every time that I make a mistake, I just, I just post the clip. I just say, I fucked up clip. It's the best thing ever. And I think that, like, you don't see that anymore in, in sports well, let, and coaches. Well, let me tell you how you feel a little bit. Why I like Belichick is because I knew Belichick a little bit. But more importantly, Belichick was in Cleveland. And it was a big quarterback controversy. And he said he never ran it. The media did. And eventually cost him his job. And he said, I'll never let those son of bitches ever get the edge on me. Mm. On to Cincinnati. I mean, that's, that's kind of what it is. My thing was simply... I'm here for you. I'll answer every question. But don't, don't insult my intelligence. Don't be a political reporter. Come in and ask me if I'm going to give money back. You know, like, what the? Yeah, man, you can't. I mean, and, and by the way, if you hear in the background, the other reporters are yes. saying, shut up. You know. Yeah. My, 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 once again, what's a good day? We'll probably start a little fight, and then you go from there. But for, some, <laughs> for somebody, I'll tell you this. This is a very honest, like I fucked up kind of thing. It's not really that, but that's how, that's how I'm built. And I can still love you and hug you. Uh, when David Solomon, one of the guys who used to bust my ass all the time, when he died in an automobile accident going home, uh, it was like a loss of my life. I mean, he's a terrific guy. Phil Charles is now SID. I mean, these are the guys who are reporters who just end up becoming good friends. And I think what they did eventually is respect me because I'll answer any question. I'm not running away from you. And I'll tell you how, exactly how I feel. And it probably, I, as I said, I, if I knew your backgrounds, I'd kind of know why you are what you are in a lot of ways. And, and I mean that very honestly. People read things, listen sometimes. I want to know kind of know what you say, but what you've done, what you do, and why do you become who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's no question here. If you're an 18-year-old kid coming home from UMass, full scholarship, world on the plate, 
but have lost your dad, have no money, having to work in a stone cutters and get up early every morning, pump gas. Uh, I mean, I, when I was playing football, we'd have a one o'clock game, I'd be up at five, pump gas for three hours, go up to and play tight end. And, 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 and my point being, I'm not, I don't know, on sympathy, it's just something I had to do to help my family. And, and it was never one of those things that I wouldn't do it. By leaving school, I mean, once again, I don't know. I, I, some people say they don't know what a, a silver spoon is. Silver? God damn, you're lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? You're lucky with, with, with platinum. Yeah. And, uh, but my point being, it creates a thing where uh, I love doing things for people, whether it be Autism Speaks, I have a granddaughter, whether it be the Calhoun Cardiology Center because I lost both my mom and dad through cardiac disease, whether it be helping people in, in charities. I'm not saying I'm Mr. Good Guy. What I'm saying to you is when you're in the position to have this, the microphone, make sure you use it for others who can't have one, can't be heard. Make sure you become a voice for those to be heard. I want to be judged by that on um, what my players think. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and I, I become the father I didn't have to a lot of my players. My father would tell me stories about the Cape of Good Hope, about racial issues way back in the day, going around in, 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 in the merchant ship, him as a, as a ship's engineer, and, a, and just the different things. And it, a hero took me to football games, started when I was eight years old, every Saturday. And I think the whole thing came down to about why is he like he is? Well, he's half crazy. Okay, fine. But he's, he, he has things that have been instilled in him about values and family and love. And I think that's really, really important. Being gritty, as we started off by saying, is a natural, I think, production product of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I didn't like things. I love things. You know, I used to have a friend, when I was a teacher coach, she used to say in high school, said, I've never seen a guy, my wife used to make meatloaf sandwiches, and, and she, he's fallen in love with his lunch. Passion is something I have a lot of. I think that one thing that I've learned already through this interview is that, like, Grit is fundamentally an expression of something that you love. Exactly right. You'll never, you'll never be able to truly demonstrate grit in something that you don't really care about. And that's you can say I've got grit. You can say, hey, coach, I'll, I'll do whatever you say. I'll be the first one in, the last one out. But unless you truly love what you're doing, you will never actually show that grit. I'm 79 years old, sitting here, ready to coach a bunch of Division three kids. I can tell you right now, I, I know this is going to be shocking to you, it's not for the money. <laughs> <laughs> Ball is life for you. One, yeah. thing that, one thing the Catholic, and I'm Catholic, one thing the Catholics do is we, uh, we take a, a vow of poverty, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looking at my paycheck. My mom, no, but I'm here because of the kids. Well, one thing I love is you retired from basketball to go coach more basketball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You tucked my wife. <laughs> no, I, I, but, I, but I do think that you... When you're, when you're on, the, on the field and you say, and you couldn't be more accurate, by the way, what you said, in August, middle of August, it's easy to say how hard you're going to work. You know, about the third day, third week, it gets to be old hat. And we're just getting started. Mm -hmm. You know, when I tell you you've got a chance to be a great player, I actually fucking mean it. And I actually do take this shit really seriously. And if you tell me you want to go and play basketball after this, you know, it's kind of strange. I actually take that seriously. They you actually not bullshitting me. And that's the way I'm going to treat you. And then when I got in practice, I said, are you going to goddamn it run? You sure you want to be playing now? And that's when the, the rubber, the, 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 you Found know, I, you really love it. it. You, you got you to gotta care about it. And I don't get up in the morning uh, to do anything uh, that I don't really love. You know, I mean, I love theater. I love watching people go into other worlds and I'm fascinated by that. I, I love reading. I, I, I love things where you watch people pursue things and I have great respect for those who did. I don't care if you're born Brady. I don't care if you're born like Brady. Obviously he had a very good upbringing, great family, etc. Brady's got a little different tool than most of us have. Right? Mm -hmm. He don't want to just be good. He really wants to be good. Yeah. You know, and I, I think when you see that, so you don't have to have a hard, scrabbled life to do that. You know, we get brought out in different ways. You know what brings us out mainly? Circumstance. What did I fall back on? That 18-year-old guy coming back from college, running around, punching people, do all the different things. And then I turned that into 
what I can give to my players, mm -hmm. how I got out of that. I took my players to my house, and I, I live on like right behind Pomfret School or Prep School, and we had about 50 acres. Trust me, there's nothing but beer and deer out there, so it's not exactly <laughs> <That's pretty good. laughs> a hidden ranch. But it's all done over, it's et cetera, et cetera. And downstairs, I had lined up as I got like, I think, 40, 40 rings championship rings, national championship, whatever it may be, and trophies and, and, and keys to the city. And I could see them all looking around. And I said to them, you know, fellas, I started out like you. Actually, I, I didn't. I started like you, some of my guys who are from more, more, more better circumstances financially, but I ended up here. So you're all looking around. They're like, you know, I said, everything's obtainable if you understand what it needs to take to get to where you want to be. Where you want to be, not where I want to be, where you are. It's all obtainable. I can tell you that. And I just want to tell you a couple things. A few days, I felt like, really? I've got to put this much into that? And the passion I had for it? Of course I do. Because I'm getting this incredible pleasure. I mean, walk out of a gym after getting on a kid and said, just seeing that slight turn, it's progress. We're getting there. He took his first step. He actually understands. So I, I think all those things are incredibly important. And I, I can tell you, my wife used to say to me, like, I love going to bed with you. I said, it's really kind. I, I appreciate that. Actually, nice compliment. And she said, but you can't keep bringing those 14 guys in, into bed every night. <laughs> <laughs> and by that, she means mainly, I'd say, right. uh, middle of saying, I'd say, do you see what DJ didn't do today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what you are know you talking saying? about? Yeah. yeah. What is this? Yes, yes. And... and, and I, I find nothing wrong with that. I would, I would find that my high school coach, Fred Herger, who died relatively young, but was a great coach, kicked me in the ass. Literally, if I didn't follow my shot, he kicked me in the ass. Today, I guess I'd get him for abuse. I wouldn't, because he got me to a full scholarship, got me to my life. But my point being is that he was there when I needed him, and I, that's what I really wanted to be all the time. I guess I was trying to kind of replace kids' fathers of, of male figures in their lives who some who didn't have or didn't have the kind of situation that needed to have plenty of great fathers. I don't mean that. But understand, it's really, really important to have somebody there. You know, everybody needs somebody. And, and, and I, 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 maybe I'm, I'm good in some ways because I understand what it's like to have, quote, privilege, white privilege. Mm -hmm. I also understand what it's like to have no money. Mm -hmm. And, and, and just with this, if mom could, could uh, Western Union, way back in the day, 20 bucks for the week. Yeah. All right, so I have one last question. Uh, you were always uh, great at working the refs. Who was your match in that? Who was the guy that when you went up against another team or another coach, you're like, all right, he's going to get every call, so I got to get, it. I got to be on my A game today. Two things: time. So Jay Wright, one of his early games at Villanova, he's at this XL, fifteen thousand people, like it used to be, all that kind of thing, he gets thrown out. Jay Wright, yeah, Jay Wright. <laughs> So I go in afterwards, I said, Jay, man, you don't have stripes yet. I said, when John does this with the towel, I used to turn to everybody, we're fucked. <laughs> 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 or Louie does, uh -huh. Mickey, Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> Mickey Crowley might be yelling that. Oh, boy. Stripes, the respect. Jim Burr was the toughest guy. And you know what made him tough? He was so goddamn good. Henry, cranky. I remember yelling at him, Jim, you screwed that fucking thing. Boom, 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 boom. You know, Jim. He looked at me and says, You don't think I know it? You don't think I feel worse? <laughs> I started to have respect for him. And then I started doing tape. I have no idea how he looked for human beings, but he could. He'd, he was a terrific official. A lot, a lot of great people that I've met through officials. Some of those officials, I wouldn't do that for, I don't care how much I love for anything. Yeah. I wouldn't have just both. Everybody, 50% of the people are going to hate you yeah. on every call, and sometimes 100%. Yeah. And my point being, though, is that, you know, they're part of the game. And the good ones, you know, the guys who show up, you talked about the game changing. You know, I wasn't a guy with a water bottle and the, the hair. And I don't think anybody would use the word self promoter with me. Mm -hmm. I would agree. <laughs> you know, I'm, I mean, I, I talk, God rest his soul, I talked to Lute Olson about this. He said, you and I had kind of two peas in the pot, even you more, because you're in that area. Of like, and I talk about the great coaches, Roy Williams and great coach, obviously, uh, Mike and stuff. They don't mention us. Yeah. He said, "Haven't you won three times?" It's true. But but you know yourself, 
So after a game at the Big East, and I'm not being anything but very honest, I had choices where to go. You can tell I love the Big East. Just, it's just the greatest life ever, okay? Um, I'd take my family out to eat. A lot of the guys went to, whether media all went, CBS, and everybody went over there. That's, that wasn't my deal. I mean, and that probably gets back to, lost my father. My family's incredibly still close. My sisters, my brother, family. I always tell the story about first Final Four. In the finals, we had 94 tickets for Calhoun's there, to give you an idea. That's what my family means to me. And I just simply think, uh, will I trade her that? Of course not. Yeah. Because I wouldn't trade the 17 championships. Or the f I got there my way. And that's why, whether I like Rick or not, he's a terrific coach. I, I actually like John Calipari. I do business differently than he does, but regardless. My, my point being is that, you know, I don't have really, I mean, you, you, for me to get a guy like Rick, who can really, really coach, I have no problem telling you he can really, really coach. Yeah. And, and I think that's respect. And respect is, is probably what he'd want and I'd want from him. And, 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 and you don't have to like everybody. I do the same thing. I don't like self-promoters. And I watch guys, they give it almost like a billboard at halftime. I, I, I just coach a freaking game. Will you yeah. please? I don't want it about, we got to build championship thing. You win games, there'll be championships. I like you just slipped in a would you please. Yeah. Those are my favorite. From yeah. that one's, yeah. yeah. Would you please? I'm, yeah. a, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking around the room here, and you have maybe the most impressive collection of pictures in any office that I've ever been in. You have uh, Magic and Bird here. That changed, bas that changed basketball. Changed basketball. You've got Kimball Walker in this picture over here hitting a last-second shot saying, I will forever be your son mm -hmm. in the autograph. You've got the winningest coaches in college basketball history, of which you are one of the top eight that's pictured in this frame. And then the biggest picture that you have in this office is your hole in one? Oh, really? Right yeah. above your desk. <laughs> is shit, that, I never is that, that your most proud accomplishment? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. pretty good. <laughs> All I know is I tried a lot more to do that than I tried to win games. I only coached something <laughs> like, uh, let's say I have nine, 900 and something, and uh, uh, 1,300, 1,400. Thousands of those balls were hit to get that one to go in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, because you know what? And you use the word, and um, I think that anybody, you could hate me, you like me to make a difference. You can't say I'm not passionate. I love to play golf. I, I love the passion of it. I like beating your ass. I love when you hand me the 20 afterwards. <laughs> and I get pissed when you don't. I don't, I don't do the windmills, yeah. you know, the, the helicopter. But when I was younger, I, 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 when I was younger, I got, became a better golfer when I stopped fighting me because me was getting away of me. <laughs> yeah. And about a lot of things, by the way, and golf is symbolic of that. You got you to stay with what you're going to do. But I love getting out. A guy once told me, what a waste of time. You guys knew how many deals I set on the golf course to do this for this company or speak or do all the different things. And great people, more importantly, I've met on the golf course. And find out more about people when you play golf with them. And so I just think that that's great pleasure for me. That's, that's like having solitude, only four of us, okay? And in turn, intimacy with somebody at the same time. And I just think that's, that's a cool, cool thing. But yes, it was, it was raining, it was great. And uh, you know, I, I, once again, I, I just think accomplishments, you know, like, here's, about, here's my last thing about my life story. So I'm a big Hamilton fan. Let, I'm at the O'Neill Theater and the Bushnell Boards because I told you I really like theater. I think it's amazing what people can do. And uh, so Hamilton became big. I, in, and at the O'Neill, Lynn manuel Miranda wrote what is out now in a movie, In the Heights. I saw it, great. Then we, he did Hamilton, and I met him, sat down. First thing he said, I don't play. He went to Wesley and right up the street, so he was in school while we were going through our stuff. And in that, in that after Hamilton dies and his wife is up there, and she said... Uh, Spoiler. I haven't seen That's it, yeah. Okay. That's okay. He's Aaron, already died. No, Aaron, he, <laughs> wait. He's wait, already Hamilton died. Said? Aaron Burr? Spoiler. No, his wife. Okay. Who did it? Right. Okay. okay. Says... Who lives, who dies, who tells you the story? My son, who was president of Converse, president of Dawkins at a very young age, does very well, et cetera. And both my son, Jeff, he has his own company too. And, but my point was, who lives, who dies? I can't understand that. They had, I had terminal cancer, and they think, thank God we were able to save it. So who lives? Who dies, but most importantly at the end, for all of us, a legacy, I guess it's called, who tells you the story? It's who tell, tells your story and how they tell your story. And so, because she then goes into a soliloquy all about studying the New York Times, studying this, Hamilton's things, all the things he did in his life. 
but no one told his story about the real Hamilton. And I just think I've taken that, who lives, who dies, because that helps you sometimes with grief, but who tells your story? Like, who's going to tell your story? Think about it. Mm -hmm. And what do you want them to tell? And I just truly think it's, that's why I never judge, you know, the old, a book by its cover, or a, a story about someone in the newspaper, or someone telling me that. I want to know, what you, as I said before, what you did. Yeah. And what you did tells me, okay, that's your story. Yeah. yeah. That's, I, that's great. I, I do have one very, very last thing. I promise it's the last thing I want to talk about. But I realized we didn't get a chance to mention it. Um, I was I was doing a little bit of reading about you before we sat down, and uh, I didn't know the story, but you were competing or you were participating in a fifty mile charity bike race race at, at one point. This is my, my big race. Your your big race. Yeah, this is what like fifteen years ago, something like that. Uh, you buck, but yeah, 12, 12, 15 years. And ago. you uh, you went over the handlebars of your bike. Thirty five miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Thirty five miles an hour. You I read conflicting reports. Some say you broke five ribs. Some say you broke eight. It's kind of like a Drew Brees situation where how many how many ribs did you actually break? They came up with six at first. They ended up being eight, I think. But uh, I went. I mean, what I didn't. It was a shadow, so I couldn't see a small pothole. Hit it, went over the top, smashed my helmet. Helmet saved me, but landed and broke the ribs. But the adrenaline, I think we were probably close to 50 miles. We were probably close to 38, 39 miles out. So I went over, scrapes and all that kind of stuff. And so I said, no, I need a new helmet. And they're trying to get the, just scrapes and marks. Not realizing because the adrenaline and all the, you know, you're out that, I was out doing that, that I had, you know, banged my ribs up pretty good. So I get back on the bike, went the last 12, got there. I still see it like it was today. Coach, you all right? You're like, yeah, I finished. I finished. We're fine. We're raising this money for the Calhoun Cardiology Center, et cetera. Standing against the, the, the car. And the, the, Ray was there. Scotty Burrell was there. Donnie Marshall was there. And I all of a sudden just slipped down. I was riding with my doctor, my cardiologist, who's a great friend of mine, Peter Schulman. And I still remember, I said, I'm going home. He said, no, you're going to the hospital. And so uh, I guess I finished the race with eight broken ribs. Yeah, and a lot of no scratches. big deal. Yeah, uh -huh. that's grit. Um, <laughs> that is grit for well, sure. Coach, this has been awesome. We really appreciate your time. Uh, Justin, just one last, just, just for the record, you don't regret passing on Ryan Gomes. Ryan Gomes is a great kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, appreciate coach. it. All right, that was a great interview. Um, he also gave us balls on the way out. Uh, he signed three basketballs. I got one that said I fucked up. I got one that said not a dime back. Yep. What did yours say, Hank? They're not bad. Just a fucking cool-ass <laughs> guy. He's the man. Yeah. And it, it is so funny that, I mean, PFT mentioned it during the interview, that he retired from coaching basketball to coach some more basketball. That's that's In a little thing. bit lo lower stakes. That's grit. Uh, yes. But you know what? Like, I actually did learn from it. He connected a big dot for me about grit, that grit is love. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes. So uh, thank you to Jim Calhoun. That was a lot of fun. Um, all right. So we're going to do the Mount Rushmore. It's brought to you by <clears throat> our friend at Coors Light. By the way, 8 p.m. Eastern. Monday night, so tonight, the disc golf, the first ever Pardon My Take Invitational Disc Golf Tournament is going to be live on YouTube. We will be in the chat commenting, talking to the people, so please uh, make sure you get in there, watch it with us as we premiere it, like it, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Also, Tuesday night, we're going to be in Cleveland. We need an AWL's house to watch Hard Knocks at. Um Really, the only requirement is don't be a creep. No freaks. Actually, no, no, freaks. no, no. I take that back. Freaks are okay, but don't be a creep. Creep. No you creeps. Can, you can be a nerd. Don't be a dork. Yeah. So maybe send uh, Jake an email. Uh, what's the email? Or should we? No, I was going to give it to Billy. Holy shit. No. That's what was a huge mistake. So I believe it's PMT intern at barstoolsports.com. Billy, Billy, so it, you, we would be at someone's house. We would be the guy in Ohio who had the zoo. Where the lions like got released and shit. R. I. P. Like, this I, guy's not a creep. He just has seventeen animals. I would find us a house, <laughs> yeah. but you guys uh, might not yeah. like the house. Yeah, <laughs> we, we do not trust your judgment. Okay. We would be fucking sitting with all types of animals in our lap. We would get brucellosis. We get oh, diseases that only cattle get. <laughs> but I'd be perfectly fine organizing it and accomplishing the task. Yeah, I know that part. You're right. You're right. You've it been would, doing a great job, you know and what? you are right that you could do it. But I don't. I would prefer Jake to do this task. It would just be a. Pain 
paintball facility. And be like, <laughs> they got a TV in the waiting room. That would actually be sick. So if you do have a paintball <laughs> facility, maybe we'll consider it. Or uh, uh, like a low key zoo. Yeah, but send it to Jake, and we'll pick one uh, AWL. We'll come watch Hard Knocks with you on uh, Tuesday night. Make sure you have HBO proper. Mm-hmm. Not the fucking streaming shit. I would like to watch it live. I'd as like it to happens. watch it live. So proper. I want to see proof of the subscription. Um, all right, we're gonna do our Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. All of Grit Week is. So this is uh, Henry, who is now winning every Mount Rushmore. Uh, congrats to him. Hubba, 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 uh, Chubba, Chubba should, Hubbard. PFT. We should team up. Fucking everyone's creating super teams here. You do me and you want to team up and then... Maybe not for this one, but for the next one. Let's what, fucking do it and dominate what these if, fools. What if we went like 1v1v1 teams? It, it actually would be... We actually have like... We would have the perfect like age gap That's for each team. That's what I'm team. saying. Yeah. Okay. So may, Damn, you guys are consolidating? We might later on this week. We might during Grit Week. Because they, see, everyone else is teaming up. Couldn't be me. Super te- You started the super yeah. team era. Listen, we're trying to ring chase too. No, you If you can't did. beat them, join them. All right, well, we'll decide later this week if we want to team up. But either way, Hank is winning everything. Mount Rushmore of road trip songs. So songs you listen to on a road trip? Songs to listen to while driving. Doesn't have to be a road trip. We, uh, we should actually do Just this while you're in a car. again maybe next year or whatever, but we could do full albums too because this when I started thinking about it, I started thinking full albums. Because a full album a good speaks one. to you in a different way than Correct. individual songs can. So, Hank, but you're saying just songs in a car. I texted what I said. Songs to listen to while driving. I was thinking road trip. Well, Mine will be road trips. I think that's fine. Whatever's the there is a I, distinction. I, I can pull up the text. It literally says songs. That's fine. No, I'll, I'm just going to do road trip. Yeah, I mean, you, not, yeah, you prepared, interpreted however listen, you chose to. I, I prepared. I can only I say it's fine either words. way. Yeah, yeah. I prepared. Yeah, I prepared. It's fine. A road trip, I mean, it's driving. Right, right, right. It's just, just a, a longer short, driving a short session. road trip. That's every fine. every time you get in a car, it's a road trip. We, we actually have to make a distinction. No, we don't. We should do but, Yeah, trip. the distinction was made when I said songs to listen to while driving. Okay. I'm just going to stick my list. I've prepared. I'm, so I'm fine I'm with my list. I'm good so I'm like beyond confused. I also think that this is going to be a very like difficult Mount Rushmore because I'm. Uh, it's music taste mm-hmm. is subjective. So it will be, it'll throw some curveballs at people. Uh, all right, numbers. 17. 69. 18. 74. 7. Fuck, Hank. Hank just keeps on winning. This guy is hot. So hot. Let's go. Oh, you don't hmm. want to go first? No, I'm going to go one. Okay. Wait, no, you got to go and you got to just pick yeah, a direction. I, I'm, yeah. I'm well aware of, oh. you know. <laughs> hey, Bubba, do you want to tell him which direction like you're, you're happy think you right go? now? And I'm happy. I'm happy too, though. No, so you should be happy. I just think like you you know, you, I understand how it works. I'm just thinking. Okay. But yeah, I sensed a little unhappiness and I'm happy right now. So by law, you have to be Right, happy. you're right. I'm happy. Okay, I'm so thank happy. you. Appreciate uh, that. One well, was billion Jake second. Okay. Damn it. I don't think I've gone first at all this Mount Rushmore season. All right, here we go. Hank. Atlantic City, the band. Mm. Great song. One of Had the best on songs ever written. Yeah. Yeah. Good song. Good choice. What, uh, one of those times where the cover of the song is better than the original. Good choice. Life is a Highway. Rascal Flag. Good choice. The cars. No, as sung this by is, the cars. I think we're going to be very literal with some of these <laughs> uh, songs because I'll go, uh, I'll go trucking. Grateful Dead off the Europe uh-huh. seventy two. Okay. So we're just going to go literal songs. Well, I, I, I had. Well, no, I had. I I was hoping you're going to pick a different Grateful Dead one. I knew Liam was going to give you that one. No, he didn't actually. Oh, whoa. Okay. That's that was me. Okay. I'm going to go with my 1-1 one, one still on the board. I Bo- think everyone's... I, I don't think anything's going to get stolen. Bohemian Rhapsody. Okay. Yeah, that's a good 1-1. One, one. Mm-hmm. Great, great driving song. Thought it would have been off the board by now. Uh, my second, I'm going to go with Highway to Hell, ACDC. Okay. Um, all right. I will go with my second pick. I will go uh, Reeling in the Years, Steely Dan. Great song to listen Not to. Not familiar. Driving. We're gonna have to listen to it. Really? This week. Yeah. You don't know it? Oh. 
That's how it goes. All right. Oh yeah, I know that. So it's one of those songs that you like start thinking about your whole life while driving. I like to think about either the day, the weather of the day, or your whole life when I'm driving. Those are the two options. I agree. So yeah, yeah, and it gets like it's like a little. I also I also like my driving songs to make me drive faster. Mm -hmm, Reeling in the ears is one of those songs. I think if you're listening to the Allman Brothers or Steely Dan, you should be ineligible to get a speeding ticket. Mm-hmm. Or Queens of Stone Age. Fast car, Tracy Chapman. Okay, so you are going very literal. I like this. That's a good pick. I just thought these would all be picked already. So yeah. you, you just thought car songs. Yeah, you're like car, yeah. Well, we <laughs> no, said, it, no, that's, Billy's, that's a, that's Billy's a good third pick. round pick is Wheels on the Bus. <laughs> no, no, Fast Car, we listen to that, not on... No, it's a great song. It's a great song. There's no... That's, listen, a, that's a life, that's a... You this, run back yeah, your whole life when yeah. you hear that song. Remember where we live from? A feeling like a be someone, a be someone, and then you're like, shit, I'm no one. Mm-hmm. Not you. No, but you're in a car going fast. That's true. And then you're like, yeah, we're going. It's good, it's good pick. Good pick. Good pick. I will go with the Gambler, Kenny Rogers. Mm. That's a great mm-hmm. car song. Yeah. Okay. And my uh, life perspective one would be Landslide, Fleetwood Mac. Ah, mm-hmm. okay. Good choice. A little depressing, but, you know, yeah. you want to feel something when you're driving, either really good, really bad. You want to just, or not bad, but, like, that that song will that old song will make you think things that you forgot about for a you while. Got to, there are two kinds of road tri- trip songs, I think. Ones that where you just turn off your brain and rock out, and the others where you want to feel a feeling. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a great feel a feeling song. Yep. I actually had a Fleetwood Mac song that was going to be on my honorable mentions. Not that. Me too. Oh, what is it? Dreams? No, The Chain. Great song, great beat. Like a good driving beat. I listened to the whole album when I was driving home yesterday. That's, that's oh, actually what that album One of the best inspired of this. all time. This, mm-hmm. That album inspired this Mount Rushmore. That album was inspired by cocaine. Mm-hmm. To the full a lot of it. And, and whoa, fucking. Heartbreak fucking. number one. Heartbreak one, cocaine two. That kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. R.I.P. Billy Mays. Um, Billy doesn't like my list, so I'm going to. Load you management. have wheels on we're, the bus? We're going to do oh. load management oh. for this game. Okay. I'm going to sit out. Whoa. He doesn't like my Whoa. list. Well, then... It's trouble in Paradise. Okay, well, then you'll there. say your list at the end. Okay, go I ahead. I have two songs on my list. Okay. <laughs> You're not a music guy. <laughs> All right, this one's awesome to roll around when you got the boys in the car. Boys are back in town. Thin Lizzy. Yep. Okay. Yep. Good one, Billy. Good song. Um, all right. I will go with Allman Brothers' Blue Sky. That is one of my favorite songs to listen to on a summer day when the sky is blue. Uh, and it's a great driving song. Mm-hmm. All right. Just a feel-good song. Okay, my last two. I'm going to go... Nice for what? Okay. Drake. Oh That's such a God. fucking... You made a mockery I love of it. everything. I love that song. Yeah, okay. I don't I actually don't love that. I only love my mom in my bed. Oh, my okay. God. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and then my last one, Blinded by the Light, Manfred Mann. <laughs> Okay. Man for Man, uh, they are actually the same band that sings Do a Diddy, Diddy, that shitty song. But that's they also God's seem. That you were talking about, too. Huh? Yeah. That's also not yeah. nice you for what. You just used the yeah. wrong lyrics I'm, for the yeah. song you said. I'm singing Nice for What when I'm in the car, though. But you didn't. Yeah, but, but the lyrics that you said, you said are God's not, Right. That was, I was just apologizing. Okay. I was just using Drake, my, my muse, <laughs> as another way Got to it. apologize. Got it. But yeah, bl- Blinded by the Light, Man for Man, great sing along song in the car. Great intro song for this podcast. Twice. Um, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, all right, my last pick. I'm gonna go with this. Is again a very literal. We all do very literal things on this one. But uh, night moves. Bob Seger. Mm. Late at night, just fucking when you're alone in the car. Night moves. You, when you're like the only one on the highway. There's mm. fucking nothing like that. Nothing like that. I remember when. Born to Run, Bruce Springsteen. Mm. Billy, you you crush this. Yeah, mm-hmm. you crush this. Can we hear Jake's? Wait, I still have a pick. Do you think that he's going to steal one of yours? No, he's not. Okay, go ahead, Jake. Give us your two. I had All the Small Things, Blink-182. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good song. And Home, Philip Phillips. Okay. okay. Which one is Bob? that? Can you sing, uh, sing your Home. Then no, me. not, not uh, different No, one. that's Edward Sharp, Magnetic yeah. Zeros. Yeah. That's a good song. That's a good driving song, too. Edward How does Sharp. yours go? So just know you're not alone. Uh-huh. I'm gonna make, make this. Right. I thought those were the same song. I thought that was like a, from an Apple commercial. Yeah, not like from. It's a good song. I thought that oh. was Lumineers. In from my camp. Uh, yeah, it was a camp song. My last song. This is like a beginning of a road trip. You and your boys are going to get like 
first song you play on a road trip? Steady Mobbin, Lil Wayne. Oh, mm. okay. All right. Good. That was a good Mount Rushmore. I feel like we all did a good job. Mm -hmm. We all put our best effort, except for PFT's Drake pick. I like that song a lot. I know you do. But you so also much that you quoted the wrong lyrics. No, I was also get your motherfucking spent a long, long time hating on without Drake. a follow, without a mention. Yeah, but because I've learned that I can evolve, and if I can change, and you can change, and everybody can change. I don't think you've ever played that song in a car. <laughs> I've listened to that song <laughs> in a car many times. I, Billy, I just, good flag, I just, good flag I just drove back from Asbury good Park. Flag thrown two I, days ago, good flag and I played thrown. Drake on the way on the way back. All right, I, I don't believe you. All right, let's go. Uh, honorable mentions: Road to Nowhere, Talking Heads is on my list. I had Dragula. Okay. By Rob Zombie yes. on my mid. Yeah, yes. that's a fucking sick song. Yes. Um, Send me on my way, Rusted Root. Okay. Uh -huh. Divided Sky Fish is a great car song. Cause Boys, it's got like three songs in one. Boys of Summer, great driving yep. song. A Thousand Miles, Vanessa Carlton. Mm hmm. Um, Night Swimming. I had Ramblin' Man on there too. Yeah. That was Ramblin my, that was my Almond Brothers. Higher Love, Steve Winwood. That's a good, good one to turn up. You know what's a great you one? Feeling good. Is Radar Love. Golden Earring. Mm hmm. Down by the River, Neil Young. Oh, okay. Little, little Neil Jim. Young. Paradise by the Dashboard Light. If you want to get some meatloaf, if you want to start screaming out lyrics in your car. Paradise yep. by Coldplay. Yep. Mm hmm. Time. That's also. Pink Floyd. Go with the Flow, Queens of the Stone Age. Again, you shouldn't be given a ticket for that. Good for you. Olivia. Green grass and High Tides. It's a good list. Good list, guys. I think good Billy job. won. I think Billy crushed it. Yeah, Billy did crush it. He went he went the literal route that like you can't you can't not see yourself in a car listening to Fast Car. Like it was smart. Did you have wheels on the bus? That's a bus song. <laughs> Still like, That's when you get on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh okay, so reminder, eight PM tonight, disc golf. Hammer it. Let's get everyone watching. Uh, Billy, would you like to do your Monday reading? I would like you to read your blog, The Mincy Experiment, because it was so good and so Billy. And I would like us to follow along The Mincy Experiment on this show. Yeah, 100%. I'd like to co op The Mincy Experiment if we can. I'd like to get updates about Mincy. Maybe even have Mincy on the show. I don't know. He's a I don't know. I don't know. I don't he's know. A scale. You can have him on your own show. He's a scale. All right. So, uh, okay. I recently moved into an apartment next to a vacancy that I share balcony. The way the two apartments are set up, there was a serious potential for whoever to move in having a problem with my several exotic animals, <laughs> late night workouts, and a dog that poops on the balcony. It's more of a fire escape. Basically um, just wait, smell wait, issues it's not is what a you're getting at, right? It's, it's a fire escape type thing that leads to an outdoor area, but I'd have to share that with the neighbor. God, so, it was balcony on the like amenities when you got the apartment. No. <laughs> it's a thought about me. It, Good question. It also sounds like that what Billy is like the, the ultimate perfect uh, example for you would be to have somebody that you know that moves in next door. Right. Because if not, that would be like a four hour conversation for you to explain your whole yeah, life, life, your whole yeah. thing that you got going on to them. Wait, so the bal the the fire escape leads to something else? Yes. What, but you're not supposed to take it. But you take it? It leads to the little outdoor garden area. But you take it often. Yeah. So I was supposed to share it with whoever moved in. The like garden at, area? Yeah. So I like split it, but now I don't have to split it. What, with like a piece of tape? No, I actually, Hank had a cool fence from when he moved out. He oh, sick. Have it. Okay, so nice. Thank you, Hank. Nice. But now I don't have to use it because um, Mincy's moving in and we're going to share the garden. Love it. So, it just so the garden's only accessible through the fire escape. Yes. That feels weird. Yes. How far above the ground <laughs> is this fire escape? It's about 10 feet, but there's a stair way down. And okay. there's nothing, there's no basement apartment or ground no, floor No, there. Apartment? that's like, uh, it's like a, a little... Storefront? Yeah, it's more of a, like where the super chills. Okay. Like, it's like a workshop, has got like it. the electrical All stuff. Right, I think I got the layout. Okay. Yeah. So... So it would have really fucked you up if... If, if, if someone else some moved in, I didn't moved know. In. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, it could have been like a lot of problems. Yeah, like, right. Dog poop, like noise, hedgehog, mm -hmm. yeah, frogs, legal, when, normal mm -hmm. New Jersey problems, squat rack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, not that I don't like strangers, I'm able to vibe with everyone, but sometimes strangers don't necessarily vibe with me. I've been telling people <laughs> I know who are looking at new places to move in rather than have someone I know live next to me than some random who would most likely not be chill. Through word of mouth and trial and error, I now have a new neighbor. The Louisiana legend, Ben Mintz. Yes. Now, this is actually not a joke or a prank. The Fran and Mintz roommate thing was a prank by 
Tom Tommy smokes. I yep. really understand it. I promise this is not. At first, I didn't believe Mintz was actually going to look at the apartment. That was until one morning in bed, I heard that sweet southern drawl outside my window. <laughs> Mincy was touring the place. It was actually really funny. I was like waking up and I just hear Mincy outside my Stop window fellas! on the balcony. Love it. No, that was not a, a impression, big Not cat. a balcony. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Big cat, give me do the impression. Again. Sup, fellas. That's pretty good. Even though Mintz and I have over a 16-year age difference, we have many interests in common, such as grilling, fitness, and sports, which is more than enough for two dudes to chill. Yup. Wait, wait. List them again. Grilling, fitness, and sports. Okay, so <laughs> that's, I, it, that's, what, it, that's pretty much everything. What I love about that is, yeah, if you have if that, if you have that Venn diagram overlapping, you're good. But also, it's like fitness also includes grilling and sports inside of yes, it. Yes, yes. So it's like, it, it's the ultimate, like, super bro symbiotic relationship you've got. The trifecta. Yeah. Yes. Holy Trinity. Anyway, after Mintz looked at his new place, I showed him around mine, and he noticed how I had a squat rack and weights in my kitchen, and asked if he would be cool if he worked out there with me. Now, trust me, my kitchen is not that very large. I live alone, and there's just no point in putting a dining table in a space for one person. Yep. A squat rack is much more efficient. Maybe Mintz will get a dining table in his apartment we can have dinner in now that he's living there. <laughs> this is perfect. So what yeah. you guys are doing is you're creating one super dorm room where like you don't have to have all the normal stuff in your place because you also technically kind of live in Mincy's place. Right. Too. Exactly. Yeah, there's a chance that Billy tries to tear down one of these walls. <laughs> yeah. A non-load bearing wall. Unfortunately, there's a hallway between oh. the apartments, but the balconies connect. And maybe like do some. Maybe if you just if you just start putting all your furniture in the hallway, people will get the picture that it's not theirs anymore. That's your the long hallway. Yeah. <laughs> what you should do is the thing where you're like, okay, let's pool all our money together, and Mincy, we'll put the big TV in your place. Yeah. And then we can pool all your money together and put the beer pong table in mine. Exactly. Um. Now that wait, sorry. Now that Mintz wants to work out with me, there's a huge potential for me to put on serious masks because I'll have someone there to spot me. I wasn't going to... I mean, how terrible... Like That's my favorite part, that you were you were not realizing your gains because you had no one to spot you in your squat rack in your kitchen. You well, I was friend. really yeah. like, lifting alone. Right, you're not like, going to fucking push morning, it. In the morning, and I'm like, it would be really, really terrible if I couldn't get the bar It would off call me. it be yeah, hilarious. Ryan Rosillo. It'd kill be, yourself with your scot rack. Exactly. Squat, right? uh, honestly, you would be a legend if that's how I, you I know, died. but that would just be really bad. Yeah. Just, that, I don't want you to die, but if you had to pick a way to go, would it rather be like... I don't know, in a car accident, or would it be like you got crushed under not, the weight of your own max? Not alone with my dog in the apartment. The yeah, dog think about the dog. Yeah, why would he eat your you? Dog, eat your dog me. would eat you? Yeah, yeah dogs, when he got dogs, hungry enough. They eat, yeah. I, we would, I would know that you to. were dead right away. True. Because uh, we'd yeah. just be like, uh, we'd be so uh, mad at you. After like the fifth or sixth hour that you didn't show up, you'd be like, okay, something might be yeah, wrong. We, yeah, we listen, if you die that way. And we don't want you to die. But if you ever die that way, you, we can't be held accountable for the anger that we feel for you being late until okay. we figure out that you're dead. You see what I'm saying? I, I like you'll that. probably you'll probably get fired in the time that you die in the time we realize you're dead. Mm. So don't have to pay out that insurance. <laughs> anyway, totally irrational fear. But um, so now I will have someone there to spot me and Mintz will continue the insane transformation he's been on since his drinking days. He's lost like 50 pounds. Yep. He looks but he's. You're gonna get to it. Yeah, yeah. Ben has dropped a ton of weight and he says he hit a plateau yep. and would love for me to help him get to the next level. He asked me to actually be in charge of buying all the food for the both of us <laughs> and he will work out with me. What he doesn't realize is I have already devised a complete diet, supplement, and exercise plan that I've been trying to get Big Cat and PFT to fully commit to for years. <laughs> Now I have the perfect opportunity to control all the variables and in turn Ben Mintz into a lab rat turned muscle hamster. <laughs> we I, it's still crazy to me that like when you got hired or not, when you were our intern when you were 18 years old we just put our like nutrition in your hands and you he you know, know a lot now you knew nothing. Remember, he would be like... He almost killed us. We'd be like, hey, is this keto? And he'd be like, uh, yeah, wait, hold on one sec. And I, then you just go Google it. I, I think that Billy actually gave us kidney stones. Yeah. That, that's the reason why we have it, because we didn't follow... Well, so you say that you have, like, a, a strict nutri nutrition and dietary and workout plan right. that you've already put together that you've been trying to get us on. I'm going to throw a flag on that, Billy, because uh -huh. I don't think that you actually have a plan 
Because you've never told us. Yeah, what you our haven't plan been trying is. to get us on your it. Plan, your plan is just like if they ask me to work out, that'd be sweet and I'll work out with them. But you have never said, like, okay, here's your dietary restrictions. Well, basically, it would be just low carb. And I've been trying to get you guys to do that, but yep. you keep saying. I already you said, know. I'm trying to do low well, carb. Well, I salad, salad for lunch every day. What I would tell you guys to do is ketosis, and then you accidentally don't do ketosis, and then you just end up on a low carb diet. Yeah. And also, just that's actually like, smart. That's like shooting for the moon, yeah, Lynn, and exactly. the stars. So that's that's really the plan. Okay. So, I now control Ben Mintz's diet and exercise. So basically, he is my pet. <laughs> this is a thirty-four-year-old <laughs> male. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. <laughs> He's your pet, and you're being serious. Yeah. I mean, basically, I'm gonna con- like really whip this guy. Into all shape your, too. all of your uh, experiments, you can now take out on Ben Mintz. Well, basically, I control. All the variables, like literally, he's not going to be able to eat a meal. You should, lo- you should maybe chain him up. Yeah, well, Wait, in off hours, Billy, so why, you don't know, you know. Why don't you be like, let's get a deep freezer and we'll get like a, a big ass fridge for your apartment, so that way you know that he doesn't have food in his. Yeah, you right? got to make sure he has no food yeah. in his apartment. I'll, I'll actually check. No, but he's got a meat guy hookup. So we're just going to be got it. grilling all the oh, time. Oh, so you guys are just fucking... It's going to be made, bulking yeah. season's going to be insane. And I got a grill. Who's so in I'm charge of seizing the food, Ben or you? <laughs> Probably Ben. Yeah, yeah I I'd say that's smart. I take the Louisiana that's guy that's over. Um, I'm gonna pump this guy full of creatine, get him <laughs> squatting heavy, and see what happens. We're about to add muscle mass onto that newly slimmed mint's frame, and it's going to be awesome. Lots of stuff in the works. Expect to see some before photos from Mincy soon. The Mincy spare is about to begin. I love it. I'm so excited for this. It was a great blog. Billy's become a very, very good blogger. Uh, but that one was, I, I read it on Friday and I texted you right away. I was like, we need to talk about this because you have a pet and I'm excited to see the results. It's going to be really It is awesome. a human being. We should say that again. It's Ben Mintz is, yeah, he's a man. He's a man with he's his 40. own. He's si- He's signed up for all this. We should maybe yeah. get him some consent form. So, um, so Billy, you have to be uh, prepared for when Mintz goes through his like first couple weeks uh-huh. and he puts on weight because I think you're mostly right. focused in, in terms of like the traditional Billy workout methods. Like how Jack can I make this person? Right. So he's probably going to put on like five pounds of muscle. And then he's gonna be like, Billy, let's go. I like, I like well, hanging he, out with you. He'll get that. He'll get that. The plan is, is we're gonna get him on a specific supplement regimen that will be able to like break through that first wall of soreness. Uh-huh. And you know when the muscles are really getting ramped up. What what supplement is that? We're gonna go with dyspartic acid, arginine. Creatine. I like when Billy counts on, on his fingers. He yeah, we need, the these, we need these consent forms because if you kill him, like we got to no, be. No, basically covered. he's going to be high T Ben Mint. This right. guy's going to come in here. Pick Central is going to be insane. That's going to be awesome. This guy isn't going to take any shit because okay. his hormone levels are going to be out of control. <laughs> he's going to probably need. all natural. Might try to fuck you. All natural, but it's going to be fun. Okay, so I'm what, very. Pumped. What are your goals? Not for Ben, for you. Oh, for me, I want to. I've gotten pretty skinny, and I want to like get back to like. Squatting around 400, which is reasonable. Do you have that weight in your kitchen? Well, I was going to, when I got past 315, 385, I was going to steal weights from here. Got it. Is that okay? Okay, I didn't ask. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. So maybe you'll be able to start benching more than what, 285? (laughs) Well, I I don't know if I'm going to break 300. The boxing got in the way of that, but I think we'll get back there. Okay, Mm -hmm. but when I said, like, what are your goals for you? I meant, like, as a trainer. How are you going to know when you feel good <laughs> no, about, no, no. About, your ex- about, his goals. about your ex- experiment? Well, when, I don't know, when Ben Mintz is jacked and everyone's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. When you, okay, that's, I think yeah. that's actually I'm a good actually goal. I'm actually aiming to get it really going by Christmas, and then I think me and Chef Donnie are going to release like a, uh, like a cookbook exercise plan, like life plan <laughs> book. <sighs> Yes. By uh-huh. Black Friday. Yes. That's the aim. But I'm testing it on Ben Mintz now. Okay. I lo- I like that you are going to become like some mix of like uh, the P90X guy and Tony Robbins. I think this is your perfect self. Trying. Yeah. It's as close as we get to a Russian scientist in our midst. <laughs> you, you, you know what you actually need to incorporate is check his piss. Yep. See what nutrients he's lacking, uh-huh. that sort of thing. You yeah, need, we got to put it to you, a lab. Yep, you got to gotta send his piss away. Yep. True. That's, again, consent forms. We need to get him to sign mm-hmm. his life. But he's away. not going to be, we, we don't need to test him for doping. He's, no, 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 no. Don't You're going to dope him. I actually got to make sure he's not doping and right. cheating. No, no. you got to make sure he's not, not doping. Oh. Because you're going to dope him. No, I'm not. 
But you do need mm. to see like the nutrient levels, the mineral. You got to make sure he's optimize his diet. Yeah, you got to make sure he's taking the steroids you give him. I'm not gonna give him steroids. <laughs> I promise. All right. You're gonna mix it into his into his peanut butter like a dog. Yeah. Maybe a little, you know, something. Deer Just vape it into yeah. his ear. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Um, do you have any recap, or should we just go to the numbers? Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, here's a list of all of the empires that tried to invade Afghanistan. Okay. The Persian Empire. The Greek Empire, the Arab Empire, the Turkish Empire, the Mongol Empire, the Mughal Empire. This is like going to play at VCU, right? Not the Roman Empire, surprisingly. The British Empire, mm -hmm. the Soviet uh, Union. I wouldn't consider it was an invasion we did, but also the we're, U.S. just... We kind of crashed at their house for 20 years. They're the ultimate trap game. Mm -hmm. They're a big-time trap mm -hmm. game. Yeah, yeah. They're the team time. that no one wants to play. Yeah. They've exactly. got rivalry. Like, throughout the record books, no matter who you are, where you play Afghanistan. Also, in Washington State, two consenting adults can have a fist fight. It's sanctioned. Yeah. yeah. Kwame Brown taught yeah. us that. Yeah. Mutual combat state. Fact, yes. Mutual regarding combat. what we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah. That's all. All right. Numbers, and then we're off on 600. the road. Did we... Reminder, 8 p.m. tomorrow. 8. What? I was oh, just gonna say, like, did we gentrify Afghanistan while we were there? That would have been a good way to keep like the Taliban from coming back. It's built like a Hooters. It's forbidden. Say eighteen. Uh, paper source. Ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. Paper there's source. a paper source. Maybe like oh, a, okay. a, a nice brunch place <laughs> that nobody can get into. <laughs> what is that? Sixty six sixty. Ooh. All right, uh, we're going to Grit Week right now. Everyone, tune in tomorrow night, eight p.m. To see out on the road. Oh, yeah, talking soccer. There it was. Squirrels can survive terminal velocity. Love you guys.